my memories over the years, they're so rich in Cologne. There's mm. nowhere that I have anywhere near as many memories that I will take to the grave with me of things that either were instrumental in my life or something that was really fun that I did there. That's where my regret is that I didn't keep up connection with the people who cared about me most when I was doing the thing I was most passionate about. One of the things that I think I can be proud of is the fact that most of the time, well not most of the time, all the time, I'm trying to be authentic to me. Welcome everybody to my brand new podcast series, Time Capsule. My name is Ferris Spears and over the course of this brand new series, I'm going to be catching up with your favourite names in esports and getting them to lock in six items, memories, moments into a metaphorical time capsule. I get to work with so many incredible people as an esports host, so I thought, why not start a series that gives some insight into them, not only close to the game, but outside of it as well, and see how they would epitomize themselves at this point in their lives. And I get to start off with an absolute legend. Chad Sponge Birchill is the guest in episode one of Time Capsule. Um, a man who really needs no introduction, but I'm gonna do a brief one anyway. Uh, obviously starting off his career as a professional player, uh, hailing from Australia, then moving on over to become an analyst and now a commentator alongside Alex Machine Richardson. This episode was an incredible one to start off this series. Uh, we cried, we laughed, we hit every emotion in between, as cliche as it sounds. Um, and it's truly an honor to get to learn a bit more insight um, about what makes up Chad as a person. So, huge shout out for Chad for taking the time uh, to join me on this one. So yeah, let's get into the first episode. Did you have time capsules as a kid? Was I know of the concept, concept right? I remember okay. in school, I think we did something oh, like that school. as a school right at the time. Yeah, yeah. So my mum showed me, she said when she was a kid, she did this time capsule thing where it was basically, you know, back in the, I mean, she was born in 1962. Um, so in the 70s at some point, yeah. Her mom, my grandma, um, who's still around, she's absolutely lovely woman, um, she showed her this concept of, you know, put these things that kind of cement a moment in time mm. in a little plastic container, obviously in the 70s they love plastic, dig a hole in your garden, put it in the hole, and then maybe one day somebody will dig it up. Yeah. Which is fucking crazy. And from that moment, I was like obsessed with the idea of this. Okay. So did it with my next door neighbors in the house that I've spent probably, I don't know, ages of like, four to 14 in, okay. like, like the family home, sure. right? When you think of your childhood, like that was the family home. Um, behind, like mom had a beautiful garden, behind the shed, dug a hole in the ground, put like, I don't know, little fucking kinder egg toys in there, mm. plasticine models, probably some food in there, almost definitely some food. Um, put the lid on, put it in the ground, covered it with soil, and was really excited at the concept that one day somebody might open it I would never know if mm. they did that or not. Um, but I reflected upon it recently, and you know, thinking about my mom and thinking about the impact she's had on my life. And that was one of those moments I was like, I really distinctly remember that as a mm. kid. So I thought, why don't we do a metaphorical time capsule sure. of people in esports? It doesn't have to be necessarily just esports memories. Obviously, some of those will feature. Um, but moments that kind of define you as a person and give an idea of the character that goes along with the person that we see on a broadcast because mm. uh, you know we meet a lot of people at uh, these festivals and sometimes people are like oh you're very different from how you appear on a broadcast or you have this interest that i had no idea you had because we only show a certain version of ourselves sure. on camera right like I'm pretty sweary in real life. I don't swear on the broadcast sure. because that's not appropriate. Yep. I have really weird interests, but I'm not going to divulge those on a broadcast because it's about Counter-Strike. Um, so it kind of made me think, obviously everybody else has these and it would be nice to kind of display that with kind of periods of your life or distinct objects that if you were to make this, you know, metaphorical time capsule, put it in the ground, dig it up in 10, 20 mm. years time, you'd go, yeah, actually that kind of epitomizes my life at that moment in time, sure, yeah. in 2023. I don't know whether that's like more deep than it needs to be. But no, I don't think so. Like, because when you sent me the list and I, I went back and I reread the messages to, to kind of understand the, the concept of all of this, I look at it and I go, well, I have to think about this as the version of Chad now. So whatever like comes to mind is important for those topics that you've outlined here, right? Like, whereas the version of me 10 years ago would have had something different. 
right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the yeah, version yeah. of me intent, that's the whole point of the concept. And, 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 and thinking about that, I went, like, because I was second guessing things, I was like, is this, is this the thing I really want to put here? And when we have this conversation, because you've looked yeah. at the list of things I gave you, and some of them are pretty weird. Um, and I was like, is, are these the things that, that the Freya wants to know about? And I was like, well, no, this is what right now, in this moment, in fucking June of 2023, of what comes to mind when these questions are asked of me. Yes. So like, I guess that's exactly. exactly what we're looking for. That's exactly the concept. Okay, so I yeah. nailed it. Yes. Nice. You can listen back to this in 10 years' time and be like, yeah, this item <sighs> epitomized my childhood. Ten which years. is what we're going to start off with. 43. Um, yeah, childhood item. I think this is just a really interesting one because... I've chatted with a few people about this and there's so many different directions you can go in. It can sure. be something, you know, metaphorical, not actually physical. Or most people have gone with, you know, something physical that they still have today. What would yours be? It's, uh, I don't have it with me here in America. <laughs> I don't even have it with me here in Malta, but I know it still exists. Um, it's like my safety blanket as a kid, but it was a Mickey Mouse blanket. So I don't know why Mickey Mouse was, I, I, I guess everybody loves Disney, right? Yeah. But Mickey Mouse was something that I had, it was, I also had like a, um, I guess it was like a plush toy of Mickey Mouse. Well, that was my like teddy bear, right? It was a Mickey Aww. Mouse. But I also had this, this rug and I, I, as the story goes, I don't remember, but as the story goes, I had the rug before I had the toy. And I think my, either my grandma or my great grandma made it for me. But either way, either of those are both like uh, two women in my life who, my, my great grandma died when I was very young. Um, and I don't really remember a lot about her, but I do know, like I've seen some pictures and stuff, and I do know that she looked after me a lot because my mum owns a dance studio. Uh, oh, wow. Yeah, so I, like my, my dad's a plumber. So throughout the days, my grandma and my great grandma, they were the ones to look after me. Um, so this, this blanket is something that they had bestowed on me at a very young age, I think like wow. after I was born. So very, very young, oh. but it's something that I kept with me at, at all points when I was growing up. Even a teenager, I remember I was sitting there on the PC when I was playing Counter-Strike and if it was a little bit cold, I'd have the, this, this little Mickey Mouse blanket over me. And I remember over the years, my grandma would, um, like the edges of it were all like sparkly, though this sparkly material originally, but it all started to fall apart. So she like had hemmed something over the top and like kept this blanket together. And you know, it's one of these things where um, each piece of it slowly starts to come apart over time. And it's probably not great for global warming or whatever, but it was just something <laughs> that I would always have up until the point of uh, me leaving home, right? Oh, wow. and, and me moving out and stuff. What age was that? When did you leave home? Fuck. Um, like university? Did you go to university? No, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't go to uni. I, I guess you went were gaming. And well, yeah. When I finished, time. when I finished high school, um, I was very entrenched in gaming, and me and my dad didn't have a great relationship when I was growing up throughout my teen years because he wanted what was for best for me, which he considered was going to uni, getting a degree, okay. and not being a, a plumber like he was, right? Like not having to do a trade, having to do something a little bit more you know, white collar, which is fine like I guess that's how he viewed life at the time then yes. uh, and me sinking time into a video game which he had nothing you know he didn't grow up with video games it didn't exist in the same way anyway um, and me being so stubborn and spending all of my time and putting all the hours into this he was not mega against it he just wanted me to make sure that I wasn't fucking up my life um, but as soon as I became a professional in 2008 that all kind of changed like his view on everything same as my mum's like it was like oh he can make money from this it's fair enough so I would say, but that was, I was, I would have been living at home when I made it into CGS because I was only 18. I think probably the first time I moved out would have been between the ages of like 20 and 22, something like that. Okay. I can't remember the exact year it would have been, but um, I just That's know that. still a significant period of your life that you had this one thing. Yeah. Always around. It's like constant. Yeah. yeah. And I would take it with me. Like I remember, because on the weekends I would always get like sent off to my grandma's house because on like Saturday, my mum would dan like go do dance school from like eight o'clock in the morning until like 11 o'clock at night. Oh, wow. Like it's her own business. Like it's something that she pours a lot of time into. So, yeah. and even then actually, sometimes my grandma would go work in the shop in my mum's studio, right? Like dealing with the fees that they'd have to pay or selling stuff to people. So I'd even spend a lot of time around the studio. And I grew up around like this whole dance culture as someone who didn't ever dance. So did um, you have to go to the studio, watch people? Well, like my sister would be dancing all the stuff. time too. Oh, okay, but like right. I, yeah, I, yeah. Can, I can do a shuffle stamp for you right now or a shuffle <laughs> hop. Like I know, I know first to fifth in ballet, like all of those things. Like I, I used to be, I used to work backstage at the dance concerts. Oh, wow. Um, as like this little kid and I'd be running around and I'd be moving things. And my dad used to build all the props for my mom's concert. Like my dad loves my wow. mom more than anything in the world. Like he, he would do anything for her, like, and he'd, he'd make a fuss, you know, if he'd ask, like, um, 
if she'd asked to have this like crazy prop, you know, he'd be, you know, he'd make a fuss. Like my dad's a very, he, at least he used to be like a very angry man. And I, I copped the brunt of it. But um, when I got to work with him, when I did my apprenticeship, um, I kind of helped him see like, what, what's the point of getting angry about so much stuff? Which yeah. is funny because of, I look at my personality and I get angry about some stuff from time to time. But uh, like I got to fix my relationship with my dad throughout being a plumber with him, which is weird. Oh, um, so when you were a plumber, you used to go with him yeah, every and day. do stuff. Yeah, wow. and he told me, he was like, yeah. Ooh, well, because brave. Well, yeah, because I went from playing Counter-Strike to stacking shelves is like night fill, it's called in Australia. Like yeah. you go into a supermarket when it's closed and you stack the shelves. Yes. And then after that, after Counter-Strike CGS, I was like, I've hit the ticket. I'm going to be a professional gamer. That lasted a year. That went under and I was like, shit. And after that, I worked like making tournaments in Australia while still playing and also writing articles for a website, mm. like Got Games, it was called at the time. And then I was like, I got to get a real job. So I worked in a supermarket based off a friend as a produce manager. I do fruit and veg. <laughs> I don't eat fruit and veg. I, I <laughs> did that when I was at university. Right? Was, yep. Every, everyone's <laughs> done some hard graph in a supermarket, you know, <laughs> checking the apples, making sure they're not too so bruised moldy, and shit. Yeah. Right? I found a massive spider in the bananas once. That yeah. was fucking terrible. I guess you are used to that, but in the UK, I'm not so used to that. Yeah, bugs don't bother me <laughs> an awful lot. Everyone's like, Australia, everything's going to kill. I'm like, guys, it's not that bad. I didn't see, I only saw one fuck off spider in the fucking rainforest when mm. I went to Australia. Like Perth was So you were going, nothing. exactly. Yeah, that's I right, I always forget territory. that you've been to Perth. Yeah, Perth is, man, wow, Perth is beautiful. People, beautiful people place. sleep on Perth, like nothing I've ever seen before. We, it was just fine, actually. We should, we should cut this part. Don't let people know about Perth. <laughs> like, it's like one of these things where it's like, everyone asks, I was actually, I was just walking around. Uh, I was like, ESL are very kind. They gave us like four vouchers for the merch stuff. I saw you at the merch yes, stand. Yes. I took Rush with me. And um, I said, Rush, you want something for free? And he's like, yeah, I'll take something. So I took Rush around to go shopping Aww. for whatever he wanted. And as we're going, um, some, some people who joined the festival came up and said, hey, Sponge. I'm like, hey, They're like, oh, my sister's in Australia at the moment. I'm like, all right, wh where are we going with this conversation? I don't know where this could possibly. And he's like, oh, yeah, she just went scuba diving at the Great Barrier Reef. I was like, oh, that's awesome. And he's like, where should she go next? And I was like, holy shit. It's, it's like, well, if she's gone. massive country, so. But if she's gone scuba diving, go to Perth. Because if she was just there really? to look at like, yeah, we have the Ningaloo Reef. It's better than the Great I Barrier Reef. Hear. So I went to Cairns area, yeah, yeah, didn't yeah. do the Great Barrier Reef because I was a bit like, I don't want to have a negative like impact on it. Yeah, I mean, okay. It's like yeah, fucked yeah, up yeah, yeah, yeah. Of all the tourists and shit, but that's cool. There's an alternative in Western Australia. Yeah, and then the, better. Well, and this is the thing, it's not as degraded as the Great Barrier Reef because it's not as popular. Okay. Um, and that's, that, and it's about, four or five hours north of Perth, maybe a little bit more. Like uh, my time. I love how you say that. So like, yeah, four or five hours. For me, that's like, I get to Scotland in that point. <laughs> right. And this, but that's what Europe has done to me. Like yeah. I've understood, like the, when I finished the Paris major, I went to Amsterdam for a couple of days. It was a couple of hour train. And then I went, my girlfriend lives in Cologne. So I went a couple of hours from Amsterdam to Cologne afterwards and hung out there and then came on a flight here. And I was like, Easy. I went from three different countries in the span of a couple of days on a train. It's like, I, I, I can't even fathom that. <laughs> it takes four and a half to five hours to go from Perth to like Sydney. Yes. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That blew my mind. I thought like when I got on the plane, look out the window, get a window seat. No, it's, it's literally just fucking desert. There's yeah, you're not going to see anything. Obviously, there's right? nothing else in there. Yeah. yeah, you fall asleep. You hope that, it, you hope that it's <laughs> almost over. Like flights in Australia, it's like it, it, the only good thing, actually not the only, Australia's great. The good thing about being in Perth is you can fly to Bali. Bali is like the go-to holiday yes, spot. It takes yes. no time at all. So the reason I came to Perth was my best friend got married. I was her bridesmaid just before COVID kicked off, February 2020. Well timed. Yeah, so came to Perth, then did like Melbourne, Sydney, Cairns. Then was meant to go to Flashpoint in LA. That didn't fucking happen. But she was meant to go to Bali on a honeymoon. Ah. And she was showing me, like I was saying, oh, Bali's like, that's kind of bougie. Like, I don't know, did you come into some money? Like, is your job paying kind of well? She's like, no, it's, it's the equivalent of chips. going to Spain yeah. in the UK. Like, it's so cheap there. Absolutely bonkers. But it's crazy, like, that you've had someone, uh, like, in your life move to Perth, of all places. Yeah. Like, it's such a niche place. It's a beautiful place, yeah. as I hope you experience. But it's, it's such a niche, like, if you're there, you live in Perth. You know, you're not experiencing the rest of the world. You're making the most of what we have available there. I realized that when I was home at Christmas. The people are lovely. The weather's lovely. I love everything about it. And one mm. day I wish I could move home. But if I want to do video games, I can't live in Perth. No. I can't live in Perth at it's all. It's like. very isolated. And I didn't feel that until I messaged my mom. And I was like, oh, it's 4 p.m. here. Like, maybe we time can have zone, a call. Right? It's 4 a.m. at home. Like, yeah. that's insane. And then you think about the other time zones that are available. And it's kind of like... There's nothing in them for the most part. Like yeah. it's yeah, it's very it's a very isolated 
area, which yeah. it's hard for gaming. Exactly. And it's like, if you want to be in touch with something that we do, then it's really not possible to be there all the time, which I understand. I would love to visit more, especially now the pandemic has ended and now I have a niece. So I would love to go home and see her a little bit more, but she's in Melbourne and Melbourne. I love you guys in Australia, but Melbourne sucks. Uh, oh, hot take. It's cold. Uh, yeah, it is. Why would I, I live in Australia yeah, and go true. to a cold that's place? <laughs> I want to be in a warm place. Only warm. It was cold there. It reminded me of London, but anywhere that something could grow, it would grow. Okay. The vegetation yeah, is fair beautiful enough. there. But it also reminded me of London because it was fucking cold. Yeah. But there was a bit of history there. And the public transport was great. Didn't test that in Perth, admittedly. If, if people want a city that is closest to like a European city, you go to Melbourne. Like in terms of a city that's actually a city. Yeah. Like if you want to go somewhere that's for touristy stuff, you'd go to Sydney, right? Yes. Sydney Opera House, right? The, the, the Sydney Harbour Bridge, right? And mm. then it's a bit more iconic in terms of what you're seeing. Definitely. But if you want to go to Australia and take the most of the environment, you'd go to like Queensland or you go to Perth. Um, we got off the conversation. Of oh the, yeah, that's my bad. The Disney back. No, no, this is great. This is this is The wonderful. Mickey Mouse rug. Yeah. Are you a Disney kid? Were you a big Ooh. Mickey Mouse? lover and you know, all the other characters definitely enjoyed a bit of daffy duck okay uh did you ever it, watch fantasia i did how like uh, well, realizing it's a, it's that's avatar. real as an avatar think what? about the think about think about the plot of fantasia and then think <laughs> about the plot of avatar i've never put that together it's essentially the same thing man mind blown that's essentially it. the same the thing podcast here. no yeah, it really it is, is. It, yeah. it is it's, jesus that's right? so true I, I remember like watching that when I was a kid and then, you know, you forget about it for 10 years mm -hmm. and then you bring it up to a friend and you're like, did you watch this shit when you were a kid? And they're like, nah, what is it? And then you have to describe it and it's like, is that real? Is it's like when you brought up H2O just add water to me. I was like, <laughs> yeah. why are you even watching this? How is this a show that has ended up on your television? I know you get home and away and neighbors, yeah, but man. that shit, like what is going on? Yeah, I don't know, man. CBBC was just buying all the good exports, couldn't afford to make programs That's our themselves. best exports. Yeah. Now I'm really worried. You guys got <laughs> Kylie, Kylie Minogue and neighbors. You, Kylie, and fucking <laughs> 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 Me in the same sentence as Kylie. Something I never thought I would experience. Oh, shit. Yeah, I, I'm, not, I'm not a Disney kids i grew up on like i remember the disney channel channel one to five but that's as i got older television yeah when i was yeah we, we did you have disney channel access yeah I, we yeah. had a thing called foxtel uh which was like cable tv in australia okay so on the cable tv we had the disney channel but that was after the fact when i was a kid i guess just disney was like cartoon so it was for kids right right okay um but so i didn't have any like real association with mickey mouse other than this blanket like i haven't been to disneyland I've, i like disney stuff like i'm not anti-disney maybe no, no. you know but it wasn't like i wasn't necessarily infatuated with disney like it wasn't like i'm walking around like reciting all the disney tunes and everything like that like, i got like a lot of disney Some movies people like that it was just this blanket yeah just no, that's this, lovely yeah it's lovely when like random things like that can give you a link Oh, for sure. To a franchise or something that isn't the traditional, like, oh, I love the movies or I love going to Disneyland every year. Like, I have friends that religiously go to Disneyland. I think it's fun. Every year. I think it's fun. Are you, you a roller a bit... coaster man? I love oh, roller coasters. I hate roller coasters. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Okay. I'm the biggest baby when it comes to that shit. What do you I... not like? You don't like how quick it goes? You don't like you're not in control? A lot yeah, of people have issues with control. control. Yeah, yeah, no, I really, I'm really reflective on that recently and being like, I can't control everything. So why would I put myself in a situation where I'm willingly giving? up that control that's yeah. not fun but that gives you adrenaline i, I guess, fucking love being... it the only thing that is close to playing in a competitive environment and like winning or losing that adrenaline feeling of just being like amped the closest thing to it that i've ever had is skydiving or roller coasters when it's like mental you're doing like three loops and you're going upside down and everything's wild because like you're experiencing something that your body's not used to experiencing. And that's the same thing as competing. Mm. Like that's the thing you have to keep in check is like when you're abs and you're on the precipice of like a big win, like that feeling is the sickest feeling. Yeah. Um, and the roller coasters give me that as well. That's why I want to go to Six Flags here, but I couldn't talk anybody in a go. So you on, haven't so. been to Six Flags before? No, I've been. Oh, yeah. I want to go again. Okay, yeah. Get me on a roller coaster. Round two, baby. I've jumped out of a plane before. <laughs> I'll go again. Where did you do a skydive? Perth. Did you do it in Australia? Okay, yeah. yeah. My friend did it there. I did it in. Uh, not of my own choosing. It was for a fucking content piece. Did it mm. in Barcelona. Horrible. Would never do it again. Really? It's, the falling bit is disgusting. Parachute bit. I would do that again. It's disgusting. What are you talking about? You, you can't breathe. You can, no. It's your choice. <laughs> That's your choice. That right there is, you literally lost your breath because it was so scary. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, exactly. Literally, yeah. I just shouldn't be, yeah, so scared. I or guess. do it again until you love it. 
Yeah, maybe. Maybe it's exposure therapy. It's like kind alcohol, right? When we were kids, drinking a beer. We didn't That's love it. it. You're off. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Once you, you gotta force it. We're not forced it. No, issue. wine is definitely that for me. I was like, why the fuck do people drink this? And now I'm like, get a good Pinot Grigio. I remember years ago, I would sit down with uh, Smix, Sue, and she got me drinking red wine. And I was like, yeah, actually... Sitting with Smix and having a glass of wine, that's great. I it's love that. It's a very that. classy experience. Yes. Class yep. all around. Exactly. Whereas when that. we're, we, yeah, you and I, maybe not, not as classy. No, uh, no, we had tequila and now we're having a Corona, if you can hear a liquid, just American size shot of tequila as well. Yeah. Oh my God. That was like half the glass. But it went down nicely. That's like four shots in the UK. It went down nicely. Yeah, it did. It wasn't bad tequila. <laughs> Yeah. I said I want the best stuff, and he was like, not with salt. So I was like, all right. And then he said the middle stuff, and I'm like, the middle stuff was good. But yeah, this this blanket, all right. Let me, Sorry, let yes. me, no, I keep derailing. But this is the best part about a podcast. This is why I love doing, like, talking counter, because we yeah, just talk yeah, all yeah. shit all the time. It's great. But, like, the, the this blanket, I would have it all the time, like, sitting in front of, like, the fireplace at my grandma's house, or, like, it would always be with me. Like, it was just, oh. that blanket and the Mickey Mouse toy that I had was, I guess, a plushie, I don't know, like a, but I would always have that, have that for years, 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 years. And the reason I picked that as the childhood thing is because it gives me the link to my grandma uh, and I guess my great grandma to some extent, yeah. but mainly to my grandma because um, she is responsible for a large portion of my upbringing and I'm going to get sad. And um, it's one of these things that, is one of my few regrets in life. And I don't even know if it's a regret. Like I, I have a hard time placing this. Mm -hmm. So my grandma passed away in 2018, which mm -hmm. is just, just before the face at major. Um, oh, wow. And that was the position I was in at the time, like literally just before. I think we were even at a DreamHack event. So like, oh, I don't know if I've ever spoken about this before. The, and I know the that one that came between minors, then we went to DreamHack Stockholm. Yeah. Oh, and then it was into major. Yeah. Um, so she passed away at some point in that, point, oh, yeah. uh, in that scenario. No, and she was in Australia, obviously. But um, my regret comes from my lack of contact. But the way the situation, I don't think I've ever spoken about this. Hmm. But... Um, this is probably a good reason to talk about it. Uh, she was sick at the time, like not like sick, like with like cancer or anything like that, but she was sick, just like had the flu. Okay. And um, her house is the same house my mum and dad, not my mum and dad, just my mum and her brothers grew up in yeah. uh, and my granddad and everything. And then that's where we would always spend every Christmas for me as a kid up until that point. So 2018, I don't even know how old I was there, obviously late in my 20s. Mm. Um, and yeah, she was sick. She went to the bathroom, I think, to, to, to vomit. I don't know the exact story. I don't know everything that went down because obviously I wasn't there, but I get everything no, quite secondhand. No. Um, but she like had passed out in the bathroom and hit her head. Um, so I think there was like bleeding on the brain. Um, so they took her to hospital and everything like that. And at this point, this was the problem. Like mum called me and she was in tears and then dad called me and he was a bit more put together because um, it's my mum's mum. Um, and I think we're at an event and I don't know how to react. Like I'm on the other side of the world in the middle of work and I'm like, what the fuck do I do? Like if I go home, it's going to take me 24 hours yeah. and I don't know who I'm going to be talking to. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, I, I didn't go, I just kept working and use that as a distraction from yeah. my day to day which was selfish, but I also think about yeah, it now. Really well, I think about it now. I think if my grandma could be outside of her body yeah. and uh, look at the situation, and I flew 24 hours to come back to Australia to see her in a hospital bed, she would have fucking hit me. <laughs> because yeah. I was the first grandkid and the only boy for a long time. So I received so much, like I don't know why, I was the favorite. She'd always tell me, Chad, you're the favorite. Fa oh. And it's like, fucking hell, like a bit of, bit of <laughs> but that's why I, that's where my regret is that I didn't keep up connection with the people who cared about me most when I was doing the thing I was most passionate about because without their love and support, I would never have been able, I didn't mean for this to be so sad. No, no, yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I appreciate you sharing this because like, I feel like I can identify with that so much. Yeah. So, so your grandma was really supportive of yeah. what you were doing. Yeah. That's amazing. And I think she would have, you know, I, I don't know her, but I feel like she would have wanted you 
to continue doing that, right? Like, that's... Yeah, well, that's what I tell myself. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think that there's probably... This is like I had a breakthrough with my girlfriend recently because she just has to sit there and listen to me be a babbling mess sometimes. Um, was I... This is before I went home for Christmas. And I kept putting it off. Kept putting off booking everything. And she's like, why are we putting this off? Like, why aren't we just booking this? And I was like... Yeah. Because I think people at home resent me for not going home for my grandma's funeral. Like my uncles, and everything like that. And that's not true. That's just like, no, you, know. you make that up in your head. Totally. Yeah. Totally. And I just, I just feel like I was a shit fucking human to my family by not being there. But I was protecting myself, which is selfish. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I don't, I don't act. I don't ever act like I know better than anybody i'm just kind of doing my shit and uh at the time that's what i thought was the best decision at that time and i reflect on it i think maybe i should have been there more now i think maybe i should still be there more like maybe i should go home more and then the pandemic happened and yeah. i thought that would kind of change my view of things it has a little bit and especially now that i have a niece like uh you know me and my sister we haven't always gotten along but seeing the fact that i have like a little member of the family like if my sister and her partner, like, I weren't, weren't there, then I feel, like, responsible. Like, we were out. Yeah. We were out in, in Perth, and we were doing these night markets in Scarborough. I know you know Scarborough. <laughs> and uh, my sister lives in Melbourne now for her partner. And the baby, they were taking the baby out to these night markets. And me and, me and the girlfriend, we were there, mum and dad and everything. And we're walking around. There's so many people, and there's fucking dogs everywhere. And, uh, and uh, we're walking around, and, and I'm so protective because the pram is, like, dog hype. And I'm like, why are we here? Like, what if the baby gets attacked? Like, I'm freaking out. Like, I'm, and I've and I realized, like, um, that I, I, I've always, I don't know, maybe not realized. I think I've always cared about my family. It's yeah. just, um, it's just, uh, I really love what I do. So yes. I have to make that choice. And, and for it's you, a that's extra hard because you are, yeah. your family is the other side of the world. Like, yeah. That's, incredibly tough. I feel really lucky that London is, fucking, you can get a direct flight to London from anywhere yeah. in the world. Whereas for you, as you said, you know, it's a, it's, it's a whole day to yeah. get there. Yeah, I try to forget that as much as I can. And that's why I probably am also not talking to my parents as much as I should. Um, and I thought that would have changed after I went home, but I'm still not dismissive. Dismissive is not the right word. Yeah. Um, Self, I, I've, insulated, I've insulated myself from other people intentionally to protect myself, whether that's a choice or not, uh, that I actively made. It's a, it, it is how I've defined what's happening now. Yeah. Um, because out of sight, out of mind is something that even is a problem in my relationship today. Um, but yeah, to dial back into the blanket, <laughs> it's something that reminded me of my grandma, um, which beautiful. was a very important person. I'm really me. glad that you shared that. And it's, mm. I don't know, it makes me feel less... I feel like I share maybe some of the same guilt of should have been home more, should have been there when yeah. mom passed away. Wouldn't be able to fucking do anything. So yeah. that's kind of what I'm telling myself now is she died very quickly. A, you know, d different scenario to what to what you had, but you can't do anything. And I am, you know, grateful is not the right word, but I'm lucky that the memories I have of her are what she was: smiley, yeah. happy, go getter, like very outgoing. Whereas my dad, who was the only one was there, saw the other side of it. And I don't think that, especially, you know, being a child or a grandchild to someone, I don't think it's selfish to have that and to not be the first, you know, first response. And sure. particularly when you're, you're located somewhere else yeah. in, in, in the world, it's not like you can teleport there. Yeah. Imagine if, if, if you could, you would. But yeah, I yeah. appreciate that that's a really fucking hard thing, particularly for you, because it's a long way to go back yeah and, and that's that's what can I you even do anything that's what i tell myself in the sense that like if if like i said if my grandma was outside of her body looking at the situation she'd be mad at me for for doing that she's like what she i she my grandma would never swear but uh, <laughs> if she would i imagine that would be one of the times um because yeah it's like and also she the last thing i remember like she was like yeah when i get old just like take me out back and shoot me like she was she was always had this like really dark sense of, exactly the same, same dark That's sense so of humor funny. right yeah. and and so like when i think about it i i'm glad that my last memory of her is not in a hospital bed yeah but i also wish my last memory of her was something i can put my finger on 
Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> no, it's it's very fucking hard because I think I'm going through the same thing of looking back and being like, you know, I could have oh, literally a week before my mum passed away, I was meant to go home, but then we had a load of COVID cases coming from Katowice, oh, and I was fuck. like, they take care of, you know, mum and dad take care of their parents, they're, they're all still around. So I was like, oh, I can't be selfish and go home, and I wish more than anything I'd gone home yeah. and seen her for just one yeah. more time. But you, you never have control over that, which is what's so interesting about you saying the lack of control thing is a, is a you know, a, a, an aspect that you have as a person living and kind of thriving in the lack of control environments because I think recently I've been struggling with that. I'm like, mm. I feel like I need to have control of everything now because I didn't at that moment. And sure, no, yeah, I see that. It's interesting. Yeah, it's one of these things where like, if people ask me about like how I got to where I am, I just said I would always take the best option. So like career-wise, yeah. if an option came, like it would be a no-brainer for me. I never had to think about any decision I made because it was always like, that's the right choice. Like, and... Um, that's kind of part of why for me being in control is like, well, I get to manifest my own future by doing things that I like. And if something comes my way, then I get to follow that. But it's like this, yeah. like the situation you're talking about with control is like the polar opposite. It's like there's mm -hmm. literally nothing you can have any effect on. Yeah. yeah like yeah, you're yeah. just a witness to like this bullshit. And it's like, and then that's the bit that slaps you in the face. It's like, well, why didn't I do this? Or why aren't we doing this more? And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's the worst part is because you're doing the thing that you want to do in the time. Mm. And it's like, that is the right choice at the time. You had no idea like these things were going to happen. Oh, like exactly. You and I exactly. both had no idea that these scenarios were going to crop up at all. And, but I think it does give perspective to making the most of where you are now. Yes, 100%. And it sounds like your grandma was the same as my mother, very encouraging, very supportive, wanted you to thrive in what you loved doing. So yeah. I think it's important to, yeah, take solace in that and yeah, have little sentimental items that make you think, of those times and the good memories because you know the horrible traumatic stuff can can yeah. stay there and it's important to i i think at least i'm obviously very early in the days of uh, you know digesting this but i think it's important to have the the good times and the early memories is there as well oh for sure for sure and i i can't imagine like uh the situation that you find yourself in and and, and that for me like breaks my fucking heart like to even think about that but it also is one of these scenarios where you just you sit and you ask the question like why like that's the thing that it leaves me with is like the fucking why is like i, I get my, my grandma i don't know i guess she would have been in her 70s maybe even her 80s yeah. you yeah. know so she lived a good life like it, it, yeah. it, it just my family like fuck we're gonna go more grim. they had to make a decision like whether to keep her alive or not yeah I don't remember how it all unfolded. I don't remember exactly what happened, but like, yeah. they didn't know. Like, I remember I spoke to my mum, she was in tears, and I spoke to my dad and he was like, he, did, he wasn't hopeful, like he wasn't saying things would be fine, but he was saying that, you know, like maybe they, she'll wake up, maybe. Yeah. And. But it's in what state are they gonna wake up? Yeah, that's true that's too. The, yeah, that's, yeah, you don't my dad wanna be a fucking vegetable as well. It's like, so fucked, do you, man. yeah, you know, we can keep going with this, but yeah, you might be in a state that you actually don't want to find yourself in. And yeah. I mean, with your grandma saying, you know, like, just want to, like, quick and go, right? Like, yeah. same as my grandma is, yeah, it's, it's horrible. It's like, yeah, yeah, it's, it's just a, I, I can't imagine myself in that situation. It all creates so situation. much weird family shit as well, because, like, mm. my, I don't think, like, they would care. But, like, I know my dad, like, probably, he's married into the family. And his family... They were not nice people. They didn't, they didn't like my mum because she was Australian. My dad's British. It's, my family shit's so fucking weird. It's like everyone has weird family shit, but for some reason, like, <laughs> my dad's parents didn't like my mum. Like, I don't fucking get that, but apparently that was the case. I think my mum's a bit older than my dad, like by three years, so probably, I don't know, thoughts like fucking nefarious was going on or some shit, I don't know. Yeah. But um, my dad was the one, like, in the time, because he wasn't, like, obviously he's emotionally invested. He loved my grandma too. Yeah. But um, everybody would kind of like turn to him when everything was going down and like asked him what he thought. And he thought the same way me, like grandma wouldn't want to be like in this fucking vegetative state. Whereas exactly. my uncles, they look at it from the point like that's their mum. Yes. 
No, and quality versus quantity of exactly. life. Exactly. And they just wanted her to be alive, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And like, I think, I don't think my dad made the fucking choice. I don't think yeah. that's the case at yeah. all. But I think he gave his opinion on like, Valma fucking Briggs. That was her name. Valma Faye Briggs. That was her name. Oh, Valma Faye McCarthy before she got married. And she had so much pride about her as a person. She never would have wanted to be in that position. Yeah. And I think my uncles, my mom's brothers, maybe have a bit of like unresolved resentment to my dad because of like all of the choices that had to be made at the time. That's so uh, true. You know, that's, that's fucking life. Like I think... Yeah. I think the only thing that I can do better now is be better to the people around me, which is something that I'm not even fucking great at, but I'm still dealing with my own bullshit. Like, yeah. I don't think, like, people look at me as, like, a guy going ahead, commentating Counter-Strike and being, like, high energy and everything like that. Yeah, I'm just yeah. a fucking guy like everybody else. Yeah, exactly. You know, I'm dealing with my own bullshit all the time. Like, I'm snowed under by work. I feel depressed. Like, I, I don't want to get out of bed. I don't want to exercise. Yeah. I don't want to look after, that, you know? And I find myself in those ebbs and flows like every other person. Um, so we've moved the locations. Yes. Audio might be different. Probably not. Actually. Probably better. Probably, yeah. I'd say better. Yeah. Less, less people coming in and stacking the shelf with chips. Yes. Or, yeah, we had some sound. Or crisp. We did. <laughs> I think it's going to sound great. And it's alive. Yeah, the it's the show is alive. I'm in the, we're in the player lounge, me crying about the death of my grandma <laughs> while like exertions coming in the room going, what is wrong with this fucking guy? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, no, I'm so sad. Justin lost. You know? <laughs> But Dexter won, yeah. Yeah, man, yeah. Australia prevails. Yeah, we have a nicer view now. We're not just perving on people in the pool anymore. So yeah, that's nice. man, we've got a nice view of the city. Yeah, it is a nice city. city. You know, I, I was looking at nicknames for Dallas for my intro this morning. Okay. The nickname is The Big D, so I avoided that massively. Okay, let Trace handle that one. Yeah, he can have that tomorrow for grand yeah, final. Okay. You know, grand yeah. final, Trace, you can have that. So Flames was saying, hey, have you seen that building? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, you know, you've seen Spider-Man? I was like, oh, I've seen which Spider-Man, Flames? And he was like, I like that one with the lizard. And I was like, oh, okay, cool. Yeah, the one with the lizard. Flames is a good kid. He's lovely. He joined us on the desk earlier. Great guy. Um, we do have five other more categories. We've got oh, we're through hour. the first. Yeah. Oh my so, God. so maybe, I don't know, maybe we'll cut some. People maybe love long form content, I've yeah? heard, Fred. Okay, yeah. great. <laughs> five hour podcast. We're, we're coming in hot. Um, category number two. Holy so we put the childhood item in there, yep. Mickey Mouse blanket, family yep. in there. Um, category number two is a song. If you're going to put any song in a time capsule, what is it? Okay, so the re. Oh, fuck, it's another like weirdly emotional one in a way. Um, so it's the Waitress song by Seth Century. It'll, yeah, I don't think you, you probably wouldn't have heard this. I didn't. I listened to it this morning when I was doing my makeup, getting ready. And you're probably for like, why broadcast. did you pick this weird song? It, it's fucking funny. Like, if you listen yeah. to the lyrics, it, it's really good. And then listen to the whole. I don't know whether it was the same album, but just kind of. Oh, Seth Century stuff? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So it's he's an Australian dope. like hip hop or rap artist, I suppose. It depends on, I don't know musical taste but regardless it's not about him as like an artist like it's not like i just listened to his stuff that's not the reason i picked the song the reason i picked this song is because it's this guy who has like an infatuation with a with a woman or or i guess that doesn't matter the per, a person that he's interested in as more than just like you know a friend or whatever right like someone that he, he's put up on this pedestal and uh this guy is like it's basically this guy talking about going to a cafe um, and being served by this waitress that he's like smitten with. And I think smitten is the best feeling of being in a relationship when you're smitten with someone. Yes. And the song is funny, yeah. But that's why I like it is because I think like it's a funny f place to find yourself when you're smitten with somebody. Like I, I've been, I'm a guy who really likes the company of an intimate other. Right, like and I'm not just talking like on a sexual aspect, I'm talking just like in general. Yeah. Um, I've been in like long ish term relationships my entire life, which shows that I have a bit of um crutch <laughs> in needing people. Uh which is something that I have gotten better at as I've gotten older. But I remember as a kid, like uh, when I was like sixteen, I dated a girl for like a year, a year and a half who was like two years older than it's me. It's a long time at sixteen, yeah. Right, for, well, yeah, and then and then I would always my most of my relationships were like a year or two years or something like that, and I would kind of just move from person to person. But I don't know how this is related to the song, but the feeling of being smitten, and I remember, I remember like when you when you meet someone and you're interested in them and the way that you feel about them, and, and when you're smitten, like there's nothing that person could do that you would see as like wrong. Yeah. Like, which is great and terrifying. Yeah. In both ways. Because you elevate them to such like a yes. pedestal because you're yes. infatuated with them, right? Yep. 
And it's like, it's so strange. It's such a strange thing. Um, but I, I really like this song because it reminds me of, of just how stupid love is. Like, it is one of those stupid things, right? Like, it's so blinding. It doesn't make sense. It's not logical. And normally on my day-to-day, I try to be... I know I'm an emotional guy in terms of, like, my up and downs in terms of Counter-Strike and being passionate about, you know, how shit that fucking execute was. Uh, but in terms of something like this, is is a different emotion. It's not something that I am putting out there often. And when I listen to this song, um, it just fills me with a nice feeling. Like, it's, it's a fun song. Hmm. The, the, the guy's talking about something that's relatable to a lot of people. Yeah. Like, he's talking about the breakfast being shit, but all he cares about <laughs> is, like, care. the waitress. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, like, I've, we've all been there. Like, we all kind of know what that feels like. And, and that's, that's why I picked that song. I don't know, because I could have picked any song. Like, there's a song at the moment I'm listening to. It's, like, 100 Gex, um, Dumbest Girl Alive. And that's, like, a banger. Like, I'm getting into it. Like, I get fired up by it and shit. And, um, but this song is just one that I've been listening to for for years now it's like one of those go-to's yeah you know, whenever you want a bit of a mood booster no it's like a good vibe song definitely mm. i never actually heard of um no Seth most people haven't yeah. heard of it like there's like a bunch of australian artists like that that most i was like is he gonna of. pick tame impala you know the next biggest thing to come out of perth uh, after you uh, obviously uh, <laughs> no well, no, he's not a tame impala fan. <laughs> no i i don't mind the, the tunes at all but i like this is why the seth seth century thing is a little bit different for the type of music i listen to most music, right? Like, I'm not listening mm. to classical or country, but I listen to, like, Triple J is very prolific uh, as far as Australia is concerned as mm. music. They're from the ABC, the Australian... I don't even know what it stands for. The ABC. <laughs> the Australian Broadcasting Channel. Maybe that's it. Yeah, I don't that know. sounds real. Oh, that yeah. sounds good. Um, it's so like the BBC. Yes. But the, B, the BBC equivalent, yeah. right, uh, is ABC. Corporation, yeah. yeah okay, there we go. Something. That's probably exactly BC. what it is. Yeah. Just change the British to Australian. <laughs> and... Um, they have a large breadth of music, but I'm uh, I particularly into things like Bring Me the Horizon or Parkway oh, Drive. Sick. Like, okay. I really like that type of music. I think that music goes really well with Counter Strike. What do you feel about New Wave Bring Me the Horizon versus old school? Like, not all of their songs hit, but like Parasite Eve is a fucking banger. It's Are you considering banger. that new gen? <laughs> I don't know. I, it's I, I weird, think, right? Like, Mantra was the big one for me that I was like, okay. that's very distinguishable New Wave, and I fuck with it but it's very different sure. to, like, like, I like both. Sure. I'm cool with both. Maybe if, you know, we separate them as types yep. of Bring Me The Horizon. Yep. They did a, they did a secret set at, um, I come from a place called Reading. Okay. And the only reason you would know Reading is it's 20 minutes outside of London and they have a festival there every single year, which was Reading Rock Festival. Mm -hmm. um, it's like Reading and Leeds, they do it in tandem. And they'd always have really banging artists there and then Bring Me The Horizon when they were on their sort of new character arc I guess mm. um, did a secret set where they just turned up to the enemy tent and were like yeah Damn. we're gonna do all this shit and I was like we were like jamming out to it and I was like wait that's fucking that's fucking all these Sykes yep. on stage like what what is this totally different but I think you're right it matches Counter-Strike very well yeah like music like that I think especially growing up um, with frag movies where music wasn't an issue. Because back in the day, like, we didn't have licensing issues with songs. If you want to make a frag movie, you put whatever fucking song you want on that. <laughs> and there's so many bangers out there like, to do with it. So that type of music is synonymous with Counter-Strike for me, and that extends to people like JKS. Like, Justin loves that type of music too. That's Justin's good. like trivium and stuff, and he, like, he, he loves like, metal music. Oh, wow. um, but I think a lot of that was influenced by our time growing up watching frag movies because the two are so closely associated for us um, in a point in our life where we're kind of becoming the people we are today, right? When yeah. you're a teenager, Justin, much younger than me. Uh, what is he, 27 now? So I've got like six years on Justin, for example. But I can relate to Justin as a human being because we grew up enjoying the exact same thing. Um, and the metal music played a big part of that. And I don't think, we've probably never spoken about that, me and Justin. I don't think we ever have. But I know that like he likes a certain type of music and I'm very closely to that. Like I don't listen to Trivium. But I listen to music that is like, you know, I, I like Parkway Drive. Like, I, I love yeah. me. I love me some Parkway Drive. And it's so aggressive, that music. Like, yeah, yeah, most yeah. people can't. If I turn that on in my mom's house, like, she's going to lose the plot. She's going, <laughs> what are you listening to? But that's why Seth Century's song here is a little bit more, uh, I guess it's, it's much different, right? It's very digestible. Yeah. And it was very, uh, that's so funny because I was like, I was wondering why you picked that as a particular song. Well, I was going song. from death to love. Uh, yeah, you know? there we go. <laughs> full circle. Full circle. <laughs> I was like, is it because Australian breakfast is the best breakfast? That's true. Yeah, it fucking is. It's really it's good. It's so good. We it's smash elite. brunch. You really do. Yeah. 
Okay, so th there's like there's the lyric in there is soggy toast. Um, is it cold bacon and shit coffee? Yeah, something along those lines. Put that in a tier list for yeah. me. Like, what what is what could you accept? And what is the unacceptable? Oh, the unacceptable is the shit coffee. Interesting. I okay. If you have a shit coffee in Australia, you're not in Australia. Yeah, true. Like, it, it's like a culture in Australia not to have bad coffee. Like, Starbucks in Australia is a joke. If you're going to Starbucks, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm going to Starbucks here and be like, this is so good. You should <laughs> like, just watch, like just over tasteful. here, I go every day, I get, and I'm cheaping out, I'm not getting a flat white or anything, I'm getting a, like a frappe, but that's because at least they're not burning the beans over there. There's like this, it's called like the, I don't know, I don't even know what it's called, but it's over that way, it's over that direction at some point. And uh, there's a coffee shop I go to every morning before we, we do, and they make proper coffee. Nice. And I'm making sure, because coffee is like. I need to know that. I'll, I'll get the name of it for nice. you. I'll send it your way. But I, actually, I'll bring you one tomorrow before we go to go to work. But um, yeah, I just, I can't, like the instant coffee they have in America is dog oh, shit. Oh, it's so bad. It's so, so in bad. The, in okay, that, so shit coffee. Shock, that's unacceptable. That's fair. That's fair. From so your So soggy lineage. toast and bacon. Soggy toast and cold bacon. Okay, Sorry. so. I don't think cold bacon is that bad. No, not if bacon it's crispy. Bits are yeah. fucking legit and they're not warm. But soggy toast. Depends how, what And what am I having on the talking? toast? Yeah. Is, is it, it like an egg sog? That's disgusting. Bean sog? Even worse. Or just... Soggy toast. Yeah. I think soggy toast would have to be the worst. Because how do you get... Over cold coffee. What? Over oh, cold coffee. bacon. Sorry. O over cold bacon. <laughs> I'll take coffee, the cold bacon. Soggy toast. Cold bacon. No, no, no. Soggy toast at the top. It's worse. I'll eat the cold bacon. Cold bacon, if it's cooked properly, I'll eat it. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So... Cold bacon is fine in this tier list. Yes. Then soggy toast. Oh wait, no, you're right. Then shit yes. coffee. Yes. So the worst thing is cold is is shit, shit coffee. coffee. <laughs> then the, then it's soggy toast. Then it's bacon. Okay, I love that we've we've decided we got that. that. I yeah. hope someone can work that out. Yeah. The worst thing is that shit makes coffee. Sense. Yeah. I, okay, I can concur with that. Yeah, yeah. I've only just got into coffee and. You've only just got into coffee. So launders at the beginning of oh, I guess it's been oh, fuck. When was it? Is it the beginning of this year or the beginning of last year? I actually don't remember. Maybe it was the beginning of this year. I don't know. 2022, Months 2023? Months have blurred into... We're already 48% of the way through the year. Jesus, I hate that. I hate, time goes so fast when you get older. Um, so he was like, basically, we, we were doing, you know, a, a really long event, no rotation. I didn't want to keep pounding sugar-free Red Bulls. So I was like, I Fair need enough. to learn to like coffee because I'm not going to turn up at 11 a.m. and have a Red Bull. Like, that's disgusting. So he was like, learn to like black coffee. And then when you add milk, you add syrups, you add like different sure, things yeah, to it, yeah, yeah. you will love it. So at a blast event, I learned to like coffee. What'd you go to a coffee order then? I'm, I'm a flat white kind of girl. Okay, no, perfect. It's, yeah, it's not too like dense as well. Yep. I don't like feeling too full. It's just like- It's two shots yeah. of coffee and less milk and no froth. Yeah, not a big milk person, really. <sighs> I, I'd love a little bit of vanilla in there sometimes if I'm feeling, okay. a, bit, feeling a bit funky, but yeah, lactose, not a not a fan. No, I don't think it is for me either, but I really like milk products. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I will pretend that that's not the case until the day I die, you know. Just make sure you limit the consumption. But yeah, like coffee is is um as much as it's like really like wanky, I I get it. It's just like anything that people are like putting on a high tier. Yeah. But like yeah. there's a big difference between good coffee and bad coffee. Definitely. And I if appreciate you burn... that here. Yes. The filter coffee here is Shit. Not good. No, it's like in Sweden. It. Sweden and America, really? equal levels of shit tier filtered coffee. Interesting. The Swedes are going to hate that I said that. Yeah, sorry, but Sweden. It's true. We love you, but. Not I, for it's that. true. It's, it's true. <laughs> I just think, like, the, a good coffee, it changes your life. Like, um, I've even got my girlfriend to study. She never used to drink coffee. She only drinks okay. tea. And I got her into drinking. She's the same age as me, so 33. I've got her into drinking coffee now. Wow, she went that long without... Yeah, she prefers an iced it. coffee. She doesn't like it hot. Uh, okay. But it's perfect when I take it's it. It's funny here because I'd like to want it hot or cold. And I'm like, why the fuck would I want it hot? But this is the thing. I walk sense. around with a jacket all the time. Because I'm... When you go inside? It's cold. It's so cold. But outside it's 30 degrees. Yeah. 32 degrees Celsius. It's Wacky. wild. And humid as fuck. Yeah. Um, okay. Number three that we're putting into oh, the shit. time capsule. Okay. This is the eSports moment. You alluded to this earlier. Mm. So what is it? This for me is um, when we were still Vox Eminal. So the team at the time would have been as a Top Gun, Havoc, myself, and JKS. So people know JKS. Uh, that's the main one. But we were still Vox Eminal at the time, and we went to... So the systems over the years have changed an awful lot. 
But when we were at the major qualifiers, is actually what it was, mm. in Katowice, to qualify for the Cologne major in... Was it the Cologne major? No, it must have been the Katowice major. But it was to qualify for the Katowice major. Yes. Um, and I'm pretty sure it was the Katowice major. That's no. what you wrote down. No spoilers, but... Well, it was in Katowice, regardless. It was, in Katowice, it was a qualification yeah. for a major. Right? What were the majors in 2015? It would have been Cadavitza, Cologne, yeah. and. Oh, Collision of Poker. That's obviously, the one. MBS yeah. winning, finally. I didn't, didn't make it to Cluj. <laughs> uh, but regardless, the, the reason this one stands out is because it was the first time an Australian team had beat European opponents to qualify for the major. So the reason this is a big deal of the lineage of Counter Strike from Australia, maybe there's been like a couple of upset victories. Like maybe people might remember once upon a time F Zero beat three D this is so long ago on cobblestone in like one point six or one point five or something like that. And that was huge. That was fucking crazy. But then in recent history, like in terms of beating like European opponents, at that event we beat um Alu playing for the Finnish team, 3D Max. Okay. But we also beat Pimp playing for Dignitas. And these are both two European <laughs> opponents and we're an underdog team. And this is back in the days. And this is something that people, people don't give much, um, I don't know, they don't give much credit to, which is fine. I don't care. That's okay. You, you, can, you can all do whatever the fuck you want. But we would have to travel 24 hours to the other side of the world, get to a place with no prac rooms. There are no prac rooms in my day. Uh, and you would then have to play your first official. And for us as an underdog team, where we were from, to beat European opponents, we don't have any, we were a family-run organization. I wasn't getting paid. Mm. I was a plumber. Uh, Havoc was a carpenter. Top Gun was a truck driver. JKS and Azza would study at university. And we beat the likes of like MSL and AZ. Maybe it wasn't MSL. Maybe it was Fetish. I don't know who the fuck it was. But we railroaded. Dangerous we, players. Big we deal. We fucked them up. Yeah. And it was best of ones. Sure, I don't give a fuck what it was. We beat these guys. And we, we showed good Counter-Strike. And I can be proud regardless of like whatever my stats and shit were of my career. I was the tactician. I was the guy coming up with these ideas. And winning as a team with guys that you love. Like, I wish, and this is another one of my maybe regrets. I don't know, like I said, I don't have many of them. This is another one, is not keeping up the relationships with those people post. Um, but those guys, like, we were all there for the same purpose. Because we love the game. We weren't making money like other teams. And I'm sure it was low money back then. It was low money in those days. But yeah. those people were salary players and your perspective changes on things. We were there because we literally just loved Counter-Strike and we wanted to compete. And when people ask me to this day, like, do you miss playing? I don't miss playing. I love Counter-Strike. I don't miss spending 10 hours a day in a server. Yeah. I miss competing. I miss measuring myself against others in something that I love. I miss out-calling another in-game leader. I yeah, miss yeah. out-clutching an opponent with my brain. I miss all of that. Because that feeling right there makes me feel alive. And at that time, there's a, a, on Vox Eminor's YouTube channel, it still exists to this day, I watch it every couple of months and every time I cry, uh, which we've seen is quite common for me, apparently. <laughs> um, but it's me and the boys beating a bunch of Europeans at a LAN event in Europe. And it's a group stage event. But you know why it's the best group stage event ever? Is because it's my peers watching me. There's rows of chairs, maybe five rows of chairs. And the people sitting in those chairs is like nothing. Jordan, nothing, Gilbert, watching us just fucking dumpster Europeans and clapping and getting excited for the underdog <laughs> and enjoying what we're doing. And nobody, nobody was more hyped than me. I don't give a fuck. Nobody was more hyped than me. Like, I, I, was, I was that type of guy. I was the momentum guy. I would, I would get everybody fired up. And I loved, I loved it. Because if I was calling well and things were going well and I was in that matrix, I was, I was a great momentum caller. Mm. And for me, that moment sticks out not only for me personally, but for Australian Counter-Strike, I think that's an impactful moment. Yeah. And I think it also made us a lot of fans across the world with how we conducted ourselves. Yes. Um, because we were just there because we loved the game, not for any other motive. Yeah, yeah, with yeah. With no other motive. No, and it's very important at that moment in time to be putting, you know, other regions on the map for yeah. multiple reasons, well, right? Do like you see what they've done today? Too. Yeah, right? No, it's, it's fucking crazy. You say, oh, JKS was competing at that time. It's like, God, like, look at... What he's gone on to do, exactly. making international. I'm teams so proud of that kid. It's 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 so apparent as well, and I hope it comes across on the board. Obviously, when you're on broadcast, you can't be biased towards anybody. We all know that, but we all have a soft spot my best. for somebody, and I hope that comes across. Like the sheer love that you have for him, we see it in green rooms, and I hope that the viewers at home can kind of you know, kind of cling on to that as well and and see that because I think it's beautiful. It's the human element of that that I think is the key part, right? Like. 
people are easily just go, oh yeah, they're from the same country or they played together or whatever. But like, this is someone more than just a person to me. Yeah. And like Justin and I, like I, like, I said to him, yo, bro, like play break's coming up. You want to come to Malta? Bring your missus. It's all good. He's not going to take me up on it. Like we're not <laughs> mates like that. You know, he'll stay in in Denmark and we'll play some Counter Strike or something like that. And I would love it if he would come to Malta and we could hang out and whatever. But like. I look at these people, it's more that something that I've been thinking more and more as I get older is the amount of human beings that we've got to see mature. And I think somebody for you that you could probably relate to, and this, I know you're a Vitality fan, but Zywu is like <laughs> the perfect example of that. It's so evident, right? And yeah, yeah, and you have it when you interviewed him then to when you interviewed him most recently, right? To like totally different. Precisely. Like confidence level. Not in the server, still fucking him super as a human confident, being. but there's a human being element, yeah. which is so important. Yes. That's what this is all about. Yeah. And, 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 and that's the thing that I look at with this is like, I'm, I was responsible for, for four other guys back then. Like they were all younger than me. So uh, I was the adult. And this is when we started the conversation of me saying like, I have some regrets on how I conducted myself, but I didn't know any better at the time. Um, but I got to see these people grow up and I feel like I have had a responsibility to them mm. and to somebody like Justin. And I haven't extended the same Thing to Dexter because I think Dexter is a different human. I think he, I think he's always seemed quite sensible. It's not that Justin isn't. He seems very self-assured as yeah. well. Whenever I speak to him, kind of independent man. Yeah, it feels like he, I, like he doesn't Put need shit me. Together. Yeah, know? I don't think Justin needs me either. Yeah. Unfortunately for Justin, I was just there. <laughs> um, <laughs> but like for these guys, like, same as the Greyhound guys, if they're overseas, if they ever need anything, any of these Aussie blokes, even the guys I don't really know, if they message me, I'll go out of my way. Like PBN from fucking, uh, what are they, FlyQuest now? CLG Red, same thing. I watch her games and I, I, awesome. I care about what she's up to, but I don't know anything about her. Like, but I care, like, this is, the, this is the whole fucking tribalism and nationalistic and all this kind of stuff. But, like, mm. these are people who I can relate to. They, they know where uh, I'm yeah. from. I know where they're from. I know what lifestyle they have. I know the difficulties of this. And I understand all of that. And I put that all together and I look at these people and they make it more relatable for me. And that's the same for a lot of people. Yeah. I think particularly, you know, I, th I think we kind of almost subconsciously congregate into like-minded groups of people yes. but for you it's even more evident because you, you experience something that you know not many players do experience is being that far from home mm. constantly like that is i i don't think i appreciate that until very recently how hard that can be and i'm only in london like that's really yeah. not hard to get back to so i imagine yeah having that support network when you're away as an australian thinking you know you're so far away from home super important i think that's the thing where out of sight, out of mind has been like a really good defense mechanism for a lot of stuff. And only mm. recently I have realized that I have a responsibility to other people um, to not necessarily be there for them, but to be a better role model of what to do. Like, okay, Justin and stuff is an example where I will constantly reach out to him. Well, maybe not constantly. Let's, let's not over exaggerate. But I will reach <laughs> out to him on occasion and I will offer he him. He knows you're there. Yeah. And yeah. if he ever needed anything, if he called me at any time of the night, I would answer the phone. Like with, without, a, without a hesitation. If it was ringing, I don't know, Justin's calling. That would never happen. It'd be like, <laughs> what does he need? Like, how can I help? It's the same yeah. with like some other select people in my life, like Henry or Alex or Jason, Trace, mm. Yanko. Hey, I'm sure if you called, I'd be like, why the fuck is Frank calling? I'd answer immediately, <laughs> right? But um, I, I, look at, I look at like the, the human side of all of this and especially in, in our talent work side of things. And I look at like the fact that we're, competing in a way but we're also like a team in a way and 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 that's saying with pro league um which i hope most of us are on the same page but trying to nurture like a healthier environment for everybody yeah. because this is and this will come up again a little bit later on um but this is like my family now these people you're not out of sight right yeah um whereas like for my mom and stuff they're out of sight and unfortunately they have to deal with the time zones that you brought up earlier and me not necessarily being the best at replying, um, which has been used as a character fault of mine by people in my life in recent times. Uh, but I can only be me, right? Yeah. And if I upset people along that journey, then all I can do is say sorry. That's never my intention is to no, upset people. If they're truly meant to be in your life, they'll you know, accept and understand yeah. that sometimes, unfortunately work takes priority because yeah. it's it's a fucking lifestyle it is a fucking lifestyle doing this gaming is a lifestyle yeah <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, we're moving on to item number four. This Damn. is actually a physical item now. Okay. Um, this is something that reminds you of an important person in your life. Could go any fucking way with this. So where have you gone, Chad? Well, you Where'd know, you I, I, I gave you this one the other night when we were talking. <laughs> um, so for me, it is, uh, I'll not bring it out now, why not? Uh, it is a picture of a passport photo of uh, Rushley123456. Just for, you know, verbal reference, Chad is now taking the phone case off the back of he his phone. He lives in the back of my phone case. And it actually is a fucking full passport picture. Yeah. Now, he gave it to me, like, I don't know, a while ago. Um, I don't know why. Rush is an eclectic guy. And uh, I remember when I went to Australia at Christmas time, uh, we were taking photos, me and my girlfriend, because um, she's friends with Rush as well, uh, in different locations in Australia. Uh, but... <laughs> I, when you asked me this one, like I thought about something that I would carry with me that reminds me of an important person mm. as opposed to something that I just have in general um, because a lot of the stuff in my house is things that I've only picked up over the last couple of years. Anything that is like attached to me when I was younger is back in Australia. Mm. Anything that has been since I've been overseas, so 20, well, probably more realistically from 2014, 2015, but uh, probably like 2017 would be the time I was like living overseas, like full, full time. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking about this. It was hard for me because um, I don't, I, I, I'm more than happy to say I have a partner. That's fine. Uh, mm -hmm. But in terms of talking about that relation publicly, it's not something that I think she or I are hugely interested in. Yeah, very the fact that I acknowledge that. her existence, yeah. you know, she's okay That's with that. Yeah. I think she was asking, I told her what I was getting up to and she was like, oh, can you show me a list? She's like, oh, I don't know whether I should be a little bit offended by the fact that I'm not the, you know, the one on this list. And I was like, yeah, but it's Rush, you know? Um, <laughs> and and uh, Rush to me is um, somebody who I've only met through this line of work. Uh, but Rush, I would say, is uh, my best friend. Uh, so he's important to me because I get to, uh, I don't know, I, I get to confide in Rush. I get to play games with Rush. I get to talk shit to Rush. Um, and Rush is just a really good guy. I love Rush. Like, he's such a good dude. And it's just silly with this passport photo because that's him. Like, he's silly. And I think that's my relationship with him is also a little bit silly, right? That's kind of what you want with a friend is someone that you can be stupid with, somebody that you can be the most like, like, you know, I've had fights with Rush before. I'm ashamed to say. Uh, I would say my fault, definitely. But that's, that's kind of the point is this is somebody that you can experience the full breadth of emotions with. Mm. Um, when you're talking about someone important to me with that question, I had to think about it. So like, yeah, you know, I... I've had a lot of relationships. I've had my fuckboy phase. Like women are something that are very important to me. But um, your friends are equally, if not more important because they're the person who's there when I'm you know, upset about a relationship. Like he's the one having to take me out for a walk after this woman that I was with for a very short period of time, I, the, the spitting feeling, who broke my, broke my little heart, right? Um, and he was there, you know, we were going out for walks and he was looking after me and, 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 and caring about my, my interests and stuff. So I don't know, like Rush is the guy who, when you asked me, is the one who came to mind because he's been there consistently over all these years. And in a job where out of sight, out of mind is a popular way of thinking, at least mm. for me, um, Rush is always there. You know, whether he's not at the event, he wasn't at the, the Paris major. I tried to, I tried to get him to come. Uh, <laughs> couldn't, couldn't talk him into it, which I actually understood why he didn't want to come. Yeah. Um, but otherwise, yeah, like Russia's, he's here in Dallas. He's, you know, when I'm in Cologne, I love going out with him. Um, I love getting to see him evolve as a human. Um, it's quite funny. It's not like an experiment or anything, but it's the closest thing to it. That's funny. I was going to ask you, like, what version of yourself were you when you first met him compared Holy to shit. now? But, like, could, could, can you do both in tandem, version of Rush to now? I think of you I'm to now? the same version. Okay. Maybe just a little bit more sentimental. Yeah. Uh, whereas Rush is... I look at Rush as the pure definition of the everyman. I like that. Yeah. Be because he, he lives the most normal life for someone in this space or wants to. Yes. Or wants to. Yes. Like he, if, he just does things that are just like 
what a normal per. I know this seems weird. Like I think I'm a, I'm a normal. I'm a normal human. Like yeah, I'm a human yeah. like everybody else. But I know what our work demands of us. And for him, I don't know. He just stays by like these really like when I become a full degenerate when I get home and weeks disappear because I'm one of those playing Daisy or Counter Strike <laughs> until fucking. He stays at being like this normal guy. You know, like he's doing normal things. Wow, that's impressive. Like, right? Yeah. And I, I guess he wants, I don't know if he wants that lifestyle. I don't know. He is a, a weird dude. What would you characterize as like normal? Because I think that's, it, it's very different for everybody. Is this like a he family lives, aspect? No, like it feels like he lives for the weekend. Okay, right. Nine to five kind of guy. Exactly. And the weekend's going to get lit. But yeah. I know his job. So in the middle of the day, <laughs> it's like nothing's happening. It's one o'clock. I'm like, Rush, you want to play some games? He's like, nah, man, I'm working. I'm like, Rush, I know what your fucking work is. Like, I am a part of your work. Like, yeah. when, when you're working, I'm normally helping you. Or we're working on something together. I'm like, why don't we play some Counter-Strike? I'll, you know, I'll just talk, I'll talk to Joe. I'll say, Joe, look, we're doing this as research. You know, don't worry, you know. But he's like, nah, man. Like, i got to wait till after five. I'm like, what are you talking about, That's bro? That's so funny. He doesn't want to so break funny. any rules, does Rushley. Um, yeah, we're under the same, I mean, since the merger, me and mm. Rushley, we're under the same management, you know, we're in the same editorial okay. team, so I see him turning up for the meeting. Yeah, so he's I see there. Him, yeah, clocking his hours on the time <laughs> tracking sheet, we love a bit of tempo. So that doesn't surprise me, and he seems very, um, very wholesome, very authentic. Wholesome's a good word just, for us. Just, like, just lovely, all round, yeah. like, very pleasant to be around. I don't think there's a bad bone in Rush's body. It doesn't seem like it, no. no. He's a really nice guy. Uh, I think... The only thing with Rush that I'm a little bit disappointed with in recent history, actually, there's two things. One, we're trying to give him money to be the producer at Talking Counter. We're, we're trying really? to give him more money. I didn't know that. We're physically trying to give him more money. And he says no, why? Well, he doesn't, Rush doesn't like doing more than he has to. Even if we were going to pay him good money, you're just like, no, nah, I don't have to do that. I'm cool. Okay, so he's not like motivated he's a creature of comfort. by money or no. he, he just wants to live a good... That makes sense with a sort of normal life. He just wants to have a comfortable life. He knows what Fucking he likes respect. to do yeah. and he does it. And Man he's, knows what he wants. Yeah, and, and one thing, he will always tell people like, how he's feeling. Like if he doesn't want to do something, he's like, no, nah, I don't want to go. But the other thing that he's disappointed me with recent time is um, he doesn't want to come down to my country. Um, even if the moment arises to do so. Your country is Malta or no, Australia? Australia, he okay. Doesn't, he doesn't want to travel. <laughs> huh. And I'm like, that's sad, He doesn't man. like flying? He doesn't want to fly an economy for fucking 24 hours, which Honestly, I understand. Fair. So his, his proviso is, he said, if you put me in premium economy, I'll come. So actually, I might do that. Right, this is going to go into a completely different tangent, but I know we've both experienced Qatar business class. Yeah. Isn't that the most elite experience of your fucking life? Yeah, flying? it changes the way I you travel. I kind of hated that I did that. No, just do it I more. I loved it. Do I it more. Yeah, true. Do it just as much as you money. can. Just spend more. I've decided, well, yeah, but this is what, as I get older and like a hangover kills me, um, I've decided that when I go to events, especially here, and I tried for here, I couldn't, uh, it was full. But uh, I, I pay for ESL to book premium economy, right? Smart so I, I'll cover the, the bit from a regular flight to a premium economy flight. Yeah. And the only reason I do that is because if you don't do that, you get booked on a fare where you can't upgrade at all. So I do that mm -hmm. so that then I can upgrade to business where it's available. I didn't realize you can't upgrade more than one class yeah. above you until we went to Rio and was like, oh, maybe I'll try for it. And they were like, no, yeah. that's not happening. And that right there, like, when traveling is a big fixture of our work, to not be able to have that, especially when you land and almost have to go to work within 12 hours. Mm. Like, I understand it's a lot of money for, for most people, but most people don't travel to different continents around the world for work either. So yeah, yeah. it's something where part of the money that I'm getting paid for an event, I am willing to sacrifice on a better travel experience so that I can do a better job. And it makes me feel way. better. Yeah. Um, Are you a One World guy? What I'm, allegiance do you have? One World, what's the other one, Star Alliance? I'm not with an allegiance. Wait, so, wait, what? I raw dog travel. No, 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 Chad, that means you dog. don't get the benefits. Oh, yes. Man. You've got to be loyal to get the lounge access, get the yeah, This is where they luggage. get you. You don't know how this is how they get you. Oh, God. So what they do with all these things is, essentially, with most of these, unless you live in a hub, which is fortunate for you, you live in a hub. Yes. Uh, if you don't live in a hub, life's fucked um, because your travel is longer because you jump through hoops to travel a certain way based on an alliance. I want to get from point A to point B as quickly as possible. And I guess Malta, you've got Air Malta, fucking Ryanair, I, sometimes BA. Do, do you know what I actually do? I make sure that I'm not in Malta when I have to leave to go to a place that's far away. I make sure that that's I'm at smart. my girlfriend's in Germany so I can fly from Frankfurt. 
That's very clever. Which would mean but then, then that, why don't you have an allegiance? Like, if you're gonna fly from if I'm going to be honest, it's probably the same reason I haven't sent an invoice in a year <laughs> because I'm lazy as fuck. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I have, I have these. You got to do it, man. I tried. So I paid for two business class flights home for Christmas time to Australia. Yep. That was fifteen thousand dollars or fifteen thousand euros. Fifteen, like one five zero zero zero. Fuck. It was expensive. That yeah, yeah, understatement of the century. That's 15k. I only did it on. I was in Thailand for Christmas, and because we were flying on New Year's Day, it was like 500 a piece for a business upgrade. I was like, this is a once in a lifetime. I'm gonna make a video on this shit because I yeah. love planes. Was it worth 15k? 100. percent Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Uh, it was definitely worth it because the travel was long. It was the first time my girlfriend had ever experienced Australia. Okay, 15k of two people. Two people. Both ways. Both ways. Okay, that's, Can't, yeah, okay, more that's manageable. more acceptable. Exactly. I'm sorry, I thought you meant for one person. No, 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 I was no, like, no, 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 what? No, that, that would be pushing it a little bit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, doing it, it was, it was definitely worth it. And, and, you know, if I was to travel to Australia multiple times a year, I obviously couldn't go in business class every single time. Yeah. I, I would just, that would make no sense. But for the idea, it was the first time I've been going home since the pandemic. I was taking my partner with me. Um, I didn't want it to be a miserable experience. I wanted her to enjoy her time. I wanted her to have good memories of Australia. And the last thing you want is travel tainting your experience of a place that you go, because it really can. And you can, oh, yeah. this is one of the things that people uh, maybe don't have the privilege like I do to be able to experience. But if you travel in business, you don't lose that first couple of days because you can sleep on the plane. Exactly. Yeah. And sleeping on the plane is invaluable, especially when we're talking the distances we are. When you get to, when you get to Doha and you can go for a shower between stops oh, game changer. it changes the way you feel and it really and does the, this is the same with when i eat like i only can put so much food in my body in a day so why would i put something that is shit in my body i can only eat so much yeah. right like maybe i'm hungover and i want to eat a pizza or a mcdonald's okay whatever they're once off things but like if catering at the event sucks i won't eat it because i'll go and eat something better later like uh, these are things that are limited experiences you have for only so many times. And I understand that, I, again, I know that I'm privileged to be able to have that choice to be able to do that. But it's like, if I do have that choice, why would I choose to do things shit? Mm. And it cost a little bit extra to get there, right, to Australia. But I think that it made, like, the travel became its own thing. It wasn't dreaded. It was looked forward to. That's a spectacle in itself. Yeah. yeah. And it's like, it was fun. It was fun. I enjoyed the time. And I, my girlfriend is a 33-year-old woman with a little fucking... Hazy, her little bunny rabbit that she's had like my Mickey Mouse thing where they're on the aeroplane. It's the cutest thing I've ever seen. She's all cuddled up with it. At, you know, 32,000 feet as we're flying across the ocean to Australia. And I'm like, oh, she's sitting here like sleeping like a baby with her little toy <laughs> as she was a kid. And it's like, you know, these are things that I probably would That's like a memory been... that will stick out with you forever. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Two tangents I want to go off this. Mm. Um, one is specific to Rush. Um, another is fucking travel nerdy. I, I love planes okay. more than I you can love describe. planes. Hate flying. Love get planes. Get really nervous, but I fucking love a plane. Love a flight review. Um, the reason I did the upgrade for Qatar, because I thought it might be the Q suite, which ah. is where you get the double bed yeah, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you experience that? No. Ah. I haven't been quite there yet. You got the like Q pod. That was the... So... I've had... Because you only get it on certain planes. I've had one where the divider comes down, but I don't even know who we flew with to Australia. Because that would... Yeah, that, I think it was... It was Qatar because I saw you posted... This is so fucking lame. I saw you posted a picture of the menu. Yeah. And it had, like, the chicken casu burger, and I was like, did you get it? And oh, shit, like, that's right. Yes. I remember we spoke about so this. So good. It yeah, was yeah, banging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bar as well on the plane. We were on night flight, so no one's using the bar. Exactly, yes. We used it as a bit of respite because there was this little girl on our plane... In business. In business. Ooh, ooh, her her parents, her parents must make some good fucking money. I'll tell you that much. She was probably four years old or less, and her mum wanted her to sleep the entire flight. And all she yelled the entire flight was no, no, no. Like, that's all she did. God. So me and me and the missus went out to the bar just to fucking have a relax from the yelling of no that was nonstop. <laughs> um, but no, I, I don't know. I don't know if we like did the divider come down, but it wasn't a double bed kind of vibe. That's what yes, I, I yeah. don't think it was Still a double wonderful. bed. Yes. Still fucking. 
super opulent. We got like, split up on the way back because a mum wanted to sit next to her daughter, so we I moved seats. Oh, um, it's a little kid. I, I didn't want to. I didn't like that. If I was a mum, I wouldn't want my you know. So I, we moved seats, so we were on opposite sides, which is fine. I do like some time to myself. That's why she doesn't live with me in Malta. She still lives in Germany, is because we both value our own time. Independence. That's good. Yeah. yeah but yeah, we didn't yeah, have yeah. the bed. We didn't have the full lay down type experience. Yeah. Well, we we could lay down, but not. No, it's not like an actual double bed, no, no, which no. is kind of crazy. The other question I had, I don't even know how we got. Oh, Rush Lee doesn't want to fly. To awful. Australia. That was yeah. it. Yes. Should yeah. we crowdfund him fucking premium economy or yeah, something? Yeah, man, maybe we should. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's start a GoFundMe for Rush Lee to get to Australia if we need it. If you know, we need if it. If we need it. Of maybe course, if we, if we need it, yeah. Um, where was the best place you took a picture of him? What was the most iconic one? Uh, Shanghai, China. Oh, sick. Okay. Yeah, yeah so we were there, and uh, this is an event, I think. Was I casting with Matt? I may have been casting with Matt at that event. Uh, so it would have been an ESL event in China. I don't remember if I was. I feel like I was. But I remember me and Matt, we went down to the Bunge, like where some of the places that ESL have put us up over the years in China, it's Shanghai. Uh, I know that China at the moment is a bit of a weird topic for everybody, obviously mm. since COVID and they're not really open and everything like that. But Shanghai, going to Shanghai uh, is a really fun experience. And I would recommend that if the world does open back up and it becomes more normal and we're not worried about World War Three. Uh, and all that fun stuff that I, Shanghai is a really fun city. It's a really fun city for like any moment you're in your life. Like I've been there four or five times, I think. Oh, wow. Um, and I've enjoyed it every single time. And I remember me and Rush, we went walking down to the Bund one day to like where you could see the river and all the buildings and everything. Um, and I don't know, it's just like walking around China with my mate. It's just kind of a weird thing. I took photos of him in front of it. Um, I also have some photos that we did in a, in a photo shoot in Cologne one year uh, of him like sitting in this like old, at this old computer in a chair. But yes. I'll go there and I'll just sit and watch Rush observe. Like not only do I, and, and this is a part of, this is a part of me that is weird. This is a part of, because obviously I'm so embedded in the work side of things. And a lot of the people that, like, this is why I really like, and I've come out of my like depressive state in recent times. But being here, the major, for example, I was socializing every day, which is not something that is normal for me. I'm yeah, sure yeah. you've seen that. You know, Chad's not always around. <laughs> no, I felt like that was a character arc in Paris. Was yeah. like you would be ping ponging and in but the little Minecraft fucking weird area. Yeah. Like that's how I used most to be. Most of the time. Um, but th that kind of had fallen off in recent time. Uh, I think when I was starting to lose my hair, I was much more self-conscious about myself, and I didn't really want to do anything in the last couple of years. But now that I've realized that cosmetic surgery is great and it makes me feel good about myself. Um, I'm kind of back on that social side of things and um, fuck what was I talking about with Rush taking pictures of him watching him observe oh yeah Loving and like life. yeah like I I like I'm trying to get the social like we talk about the Korean barbecue the other night like I just like spending time with the guy like yeah. uh, in, in any walk of life and yeah I don't we know we love Rush Lee is what we, we love Rush we've we love Rush. He's a, yeah, he's a wholesome dude. Gleaned from this. He's getting recognized here a lot. I love that. It's so cute. Oh, it's so fucking important. I think that's one thing that, like, esports, if I could change, production getting recognized equally as people on camera. Sure. I know that's really fucking Well, you and I see it a lot more than everybody yes. else, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, we wouldn't be here and in the state we are without every single one of those people behind exactly. the scenes. And I think that's what EPL kind of promotes in a way, and I hope we get to do more of that Precisely. in Malta. Um, the fifth item that you were putting in okay. kind of goes nicely with our plane discussion. Okay. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna segue from that. We're yes, gonna move yes, back yes, and we're gonna segue. move forward in time. Um, your travel essential, which funnily enough, I did a, um, I do all the media days with ESL and we do these like super cuts. That's where yeah. you ask the same question to all the fucking teams. And I was like, oh, I wonder what the travel essential was. Everybody's was noise canceling headphones, which makes sense. You've gone for something else, which I really appreciate. Cause when I sent this to you, I was like, oh, he's just gonna say that. Cause it is an essential, but. You've gone for something else. I've what gone for it? multiple pairs of underwear. So smart. So, so if we're smart. talking, so when you said this, travel essential, whatever I put on the plane in my, in my check-in luggage is not a travel essential. That's a, what I need when I get to the other end. Yes. A travel essential, when I thought about it, it's like when I'm literally in the process of traveling that I need to have a certain amount of things with me. And in my carry-on bag, you know, I'm gonna have my little toiletry bag. I'm gonna have the headphones. I'm gonna yep. have charges, battery banks, yeah. notepads, Other Kindle, adapters. everything. Yeah. But the thing that I always make sure to pack is a minimum of two pairs of extra underwear. So in clever. It. And the thing is, people are going to sit here and they're going to be, they're going to laugh at me. But guys, when you're on an airplane for what could be 
who knows the amount of time. With the amount of delays and shit we've experienced, with the amount of times that shit, like your bag doesn't arrive on the other end, multiple pairs of underwear, it's fucking key. Nothing worse than wearing dirty underwear. Oh, no. You don't feel like you're- You can't you're... have a shower and put the same underwear back exactly. on. Exactly, you just disgusting. feel wrong. Why yeah. even have the shower? Yeah, it's no point. But also I worry about shitting myself. Oh, for Well, it's real? not like I have incontinence or anything. But right. think about, like, imagine. Imagine. It could, the worst case scenario. I don't you know why, yourself. but imagine you shit yourself and you don't have a change of underwear. I've never thought about doing that. But imagine it. Yeah, that would be awful. On an aeroplane, you still have six hours left on the flight. God, I've never thought about that. I've never New done it. New fear is unlocked. I'm sorry. Anxiety has entered. I'm now going to pack multiple pairs of underwear. Just So two pairs of underwear in my carry-on. I always thought it would... I, when you said it, I thought you meant because if you lost your suitcase, then... Well, that's you good know, too. You, you could arrive at 10 p.m., 11 p.m., the shops are shut. Yeah. You just need some pants. The like. main concern is shitting myself. Wow. Yeah. Ah, uh-huh. that's yeah. so interesting. I, I would ask, is that from experience? No. But maybe we shouldn't dive No, I haven't, I haven't shot myself on a plane before, but you know, maybe I will one day. And when I do, I'm I'll be covered. prepared. Yeah. I don't have to panic. <laughs> There's no I don't have to panic. And I'm sure in my life, I have shot myself, you know? I can't remember in recent history. Maybe when you're a baby. Yeah, you know, so but you do. it's going to happen. It, at some day in my life, it'll happen. Especially if you're traveling in Asia or in like, I mean, Bali Belly, we've all heard of that. Like, yeah, exactly. If you go in there, Don't drink the tap you're water. Fucked. Yeah, no, very true. I experienced this event losing my bag for the first time. Oh, I've never lost shit. A bag before. And it was okay because I'm going up to New York and Canada afterwards just to have some bit of time off. Sure. And I'm going camping in Canada. So it was all my camping gear. Like okay. clothes and like nothing I'm going to use here. But my suitcase was overweight when I got to Heathrow. So I put all my shoes in this second checked bag mm-hmm. that got lost. So for the first four days of Borgas, I had no shoes. Ah. Absolutely zero shoes, which really sucked. So they were like, oh, do you want to do a Telestrator? You no, know, you can't see segment? my feet. No, please don't show my yeah. feet. Yeah. Underwear, pack it in your carry on. Okay, are you the type of guy, sorry to take another tangent. Um, do you take a, obviously you take a rucksack on a plane, yeah, yeah. I imagine. Do you also take a little mini suitcase? Are you one of those guys or do you just take the rucksack? I have che- I've started recently because I need to take all this shit for the fucking podcast and right. I can't risk packing yes. it. Yes, it's delicate. Yes, if people I, don't appreciate that. If I pack it in the check-in luggage and I lose it, then we won't be doing any shows. So Jason mm. and I essentially travel with like both halves of the kit required. Uh, so he has his stuff, I have my stuff, and that is in my like wheelie bag. And then I have like a, like an over the shoulder type number. Good um, and in that over the shoulder type number is where I have the more essentials we were talking about here. And you brought up footwear. There's something I bought in Australia when I was home at Christmas time was, uh, you know, Ugg boots, right? Yes. Yeah, okay, so Ugg, Ugg, Ugg is an Australian thing. Yes. America stole it, fucking. Oh, so Ugg boots aren't Australian? No, they are. Well, oh, they are. The brand name, the brand America well. stole, I think. Huh. But Ugg is Australian. The Americans stole it. Okay. These, these motherfuckers have no idea. Um, but anyway, at home I bought like an authentic pair, but I didn't buy Ugg boots. Um, I bought like slides. And when I've been traveling, Ooh. especially when I got to go to the valve thing, I jumped on the plane and I was fucking running to get to Harry and Hugo who were on the same flight. I intentionally booked that. I knew they were going. And I was like, I want to hang with the boys, right? <laughs> um, and I'm right, and it's the first thing I did as soon as I got on the plane is I changed out of like these shoes into these fucking like Ugg boots, Ugg slides. Ugg and slides. it was beautiful. Yeah, Are they like, fairy? Yeah, on yeah, the inside? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. It's amazing. I need to look these up. Because I was never into house shoes, right? Like that was something that I... I didn't really. Did you take your shoes off? I normally raw kid? dog it. Yeah, no, I. I'm used yeah, to barefoot. Yeah, yeah. I'm really used to barefoot. Yeah, no, um, me too. But my my girlfriend, being German, she's always wearing socks or something on her feet inside because it's more cold. So she would always be like having a go at me, like, "What are you fucking doing? Like, why is there nothing on your feet?" And then at Christmas time, we bought something, and I was like, "Yeah, this is actually great. Like, I can see the benefit of this now." So that was always nice are they on open planes. Toe? There's so many fucking variants. Uh, no, there. those ones were, but there might close, be. There might be toe. open toe. I was with closed toe like, ones. Yeah. Like that. That's a exactly. Like okay. That. I don't want to yes. buy another pair. It's amazing. That's crazy. You, you feel you feel like you're on a cloud, like it's really nice. Maybe I should. Yeah. I always travel in my bulkiest shoe because obviously, I think you have a different perception of this because as commentators, you don't even know whether you're going to be on camera exactly. or not. Exactly. Which you we're are, not, which I fucking not, love. Which means you have to pack less clothes. Yes. Whereas I'm like, okay, I need a different outfit every day, which for Paris was like, that was what, 16 days of broadcast. So that is, I definitely duplicated outfits. People gave me shit for it. Whatever. Like, they, you don't oh understand. My God. You have to pack so much fucking can, stuff. Can I just sidebar for a second? Let me sidebar for a second. Anyone <laughs> on the fucking internet, that is questioning the clothes that someone is wearing on broadcast, just take a long fucking walk off a short fucking pier, you <laughs> cunts. 
There's a guy in Australia, it's Carl Stefanovic or whatever the guy's name was, news presenter, does TV, morning TV. He wore the same suit every day for a year to prove a point because not a single fucking person said Carl Stefanovic is wearing the same fucking suit. But his, his partner on the show was a woman. And if she ever wore anything that was the same, oh that was the God. critique of her. What a guy. Right? What and he wore the same legend. suit every day for a fucking year. And it's like, this is the thing. People, no one says shit about what I wear. No one gives a fuck. Yeah. And it's so mental to me. It's like, what, what are we talking about here? We're talking about clothes that people are wearing. Right? I'm like, what are you guys on? Like, how, we, how is this even something that we're questioning here? This person has just put, like, for me, if it was up to me, if it was up to me, I'd be wearing a t-shirt every fucking day. Yeah. I'd be Major wearing my favorite t-shirt. t-shirt. Baby. This is you, what you're, This is what I casted in today. And, and and people can't see it right totally now. Totally acceptable. No, we've got a bomber jacket, very stylish, like a, what is that, like a waffle? I don't top, know what this very is. Very comfortable, shorts. Most hipster apt thing I own is this for... shirt. <laughs> but it's like an apt, I think, okay, sometimes I, I definitely feel better when I'm dressed up. Because I love the shit you wear, to be honest. I know that it's I'll be on, like, I, I, yeah, you. You've got like the, the Hogwarts, uh, <laughs> You've got that, that, is it the blue? The blue or, yeah, I love that. Yeah, That's yeah. My, one of my well, favorite things you wear. Paris. I think it's awesome. <laughs> I think it's great. It's like, it's nice to feel like you look the part, but it's not comfortable. And I think people don't understand that, especially now we were just talking about with the Madonna mics, you got one IFB pack, then you've got one in it. That's another IFB pack. It has to go somewhere. It has to go somewhere. If you're a guy, you've always got pocket. Like the, the guy, the audio guy here, bless him. He asked me, he was like, oh, you don't have pockets? I'm like, no, women's clothes don't have fucking pockets. Yeah. And it's the worst. Side note, so my boyfriend for my birthday, which was like, I don't know, like 10 days ago, he bought me a physical like well, happy belt. Birthday. Thank you. Big 27. Big 27. Damn. Um, yeah, he bought me a like physical belt that like one that can go around your leg and one that goes around your waist. So okay. I can now wear anything I want because there's somewhere to put. That's kind of cool. So cool. So yeah. smart. Yeah. No, that changed the game, this event. Because like, nice. now I can wear dresses again. Yeah. But, yeah. No, I, I love being behind a desk because I can wear what shoes I want. That's great. No more heels anymore. Ugg slides. There you go. That's the next fucking step. Yeah. I've I, been told. Get, get, they're really nice. They're really... They're I re- should do that. They're, they're they really quite comfy. nice. Yeah. We have one more category, and that is a place. So ah. now we're getting, you know, not physical anymore. If you're going to stuff a place into this fucking huge time capsule, yep. what place would it be? Uh, this probably feeds into me being an ESL shill, apparently, but... Uh, <laughs> 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 uh, it's Cologne. It's it's Cologne, Germany, uh, and it's for lots of reasons. Uh, it's definitely not for ESL specifically, but ESL obviously run a lot of events in Cologne, uh, and I got to play in some of those events. My Titan game was at ESL One Cologne in 2015. <laughs> um, so one of my fo- fondest competitive memories is from that city, but. Uh, I fucking love Cologne. If Australia's my home, Cologne's my second home. I really love that city. Um, I got to experience really key moments of my life in that place, like being an independent young man, uh, living on my own in Europe. I literally left Australia on New Year's Day of 2018, on New Year's Day, or I landed on New Year's Day regardless, or probably the same day because of the time zone travel. And I moved into an apartment in Cologne, Germany, on New Year's Day of 2018. Wow. Uh, and it was me on Zulpische Straße, which is the party street, uh, in this beautiful place with these high ceilings and these wooden floors and this like loft bed, which people joke about and call it a bunk bed. It was just a ladder. You know, it's not necessarily the most glamorous thing when you bring in a lady over and you had to climb up a ladder. But it's efficient underneath, right? Because you can... Yeah, there was, a, there was a wardrobe storage. there and the bathroom. Yeah, the bathroom great. is under the beds. Mm, it was amazing. Wow. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. There was an, it, it was German amazing. efficiency. We love that. Yeah. Now, like I said, you know, not the most romantic to climb up a ladder to, <laughs> to, to go to bed. Uh, but um, definitely a lot of fun was had in that time. And so before that, before moving to Cologne, I played a lot in Cologne. I got to experience a lot of events in Cologne. I spent time in Bonn, which is a city not too far from Cologne. Mm. Um, I stayed in Mulheim one year, boot camping with my boys in a place that was like one floor with a bunch of bedrooms and we all would be sleeping in like two separate rooms. It was really hot. The bathroom was the size of like a fucking closet. It was tiny. But my memories over the years, they're so rich in Cologne. There's mm. nowhere that I have anywhere near as many memories 
that I will take to the grave with me of things that either were instrumental in my life or something that was really fun that I did there. We got stuck in Cologne during the pandemic. So yeah. we, we went out to Cologne to start doing Pro League stuff or whatever the fuck event it was at the time. And then every, the world shut down around us in Cologne and ESL took care of me, Henry, Alex, Trace, Harry, Hugo. The six of us got put up in a house and we got given cars and we drive to work every day. And in the pandemic, it wasn't a normal life for most people, but it was the most normal my life had been since 2012, right? So since pre, pre CSGO, essentially, right? Yeah, the most yeah. normal my life had been. Um, getting to drive Harry, uh, Henry and Alex to work every day and uh, getting to be in this house and doing my own laundry and cooking my own meals and doing all this stuff. And, and this was in the pandemic when we get kicked out of multiple hotels. No one knows what's going on and Airbnb closes down. Uh, um, my girlfriend, she's not from Cologne. She lives in Cologne. She's from Hamburg. But um, when I go and visit her, like... Uh, I spend time in Cologne and we go for a walk and we sit on the big limestone walls and we look at the, the cathedral. Like there's nothing more beautiful that, than that. And um, I just have so many, like one of, my, one of my once upon a time friends, someone who I did a bad job of keeping in contact with, his name's Glenn Stevens. Maybe one day he'll listen to this and he can know that I'm a shit person. But uh, he came to visit me out there in Cologne one time when we were playing an event. And I haven't done a very good job of keeping up with people from home. Um, but yeah, he came out and visited me at an event once upon a time. I got to be a bachelor in Cologne. Oh, wow. Which is great. It uh, seems like that kind of... Having an Australian accent in yeah, Germany yeah, is yeah, amazing. Yeah. I can, I, I'll say that much. Um, yeah, Cologne is like a city for more reasons than one. Like, honestly, 2017 was a year where I lived nowhere. I lived from a... Well, I lived from two suitcases. And one of those suitcases at any given time existed in one other place. One was with me and one was in the ESL Cologne office. And what I would do when I would go back into Cologne for an event, I'd go to that office, I'd change anything out between the suit, two suitcases I needed, I'd leave it there and they'd look after it. Wow. And these are people who have played a massive part in my life. And this is why, like, yeah, people can call me an ESL shill, they can frame me however the fuck they want. But I'm all about the human side of things and I care about Counter-Strike more than anything in the world. And the people at ESL who have shown me that they care about Counter-Strike anywhere near as close as I care about Counter-Strike, those are people that I will consider my friends until I fucking die. Uh, and they get framed as this massive conglomerate of a company and they're this, they're that, they're bad, whatever. Like, fuck all those people, man. Like, the people who work there care about things the same way I care about things. 100%. Like, you know the people the same way I do. I get yeah. to talk to this bloke called Frank, who's like, the, you know Frank. <laughs> I get to talk to Frank. Wonderful human. Frank is the most lovely guy. And I get to talk to him all the time about doing content and skits, and I get to influence those things. And then I know people from behind production, and then I know the guy who's doing the rigging, and then I get to meet this like awesome, lovely saint of a human being. His name's Ben. He's, we call him Audio Jesus. You know, he's got this like long hair and I remember him and his partner, Erin, they used to live in Cologne and I met them and now they're back in Canada and they have a kid and they have a whole life. And I would never know this guy if it wasn't for yourself. Yeah. And I can just go through so many people. Okay, you know, may maybe, you know, maybe there's a couple of ladies as well, but... Uh, <laughs> it's a story for another time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but there's also a lot of other people like Rush, for example, is a perfect, like, person to talk about in that regard or like Michael Parsons or Sean Clark or he just moved to London Michael Parsons. exactly he's yeah. gone back right like Love a, it. You know? machine my machine grew up in Cologne Lauren yes. Pansy she was in Cologne so did, did you I, I guess you wouldn't have lived with them no at all it was different times yeah. that you both lived there yeah so Alex um, Alex and Lauren were there when and probably when I was still playing um, and then Alex was going to become a freelancer about the same time I was making the transition from being a player to talent. Ah. So, and then from there, he didn't have to be in Cologne anymore. He could be wherever he, was, he yes. wanted to be, right? Um, Lauren, I think, unless it's changed in recent history, I think she still lives in Cologne. And Lauren and I definitely have butted heads from time to time. Her and I are both very stubborn people, but um, <laughs> even if I've had a, my run-ins with her, I respect the fuck out of her. Yeah. Um, I, I really like Lauren. I think she's... She's a good human. Definitely. I hate the women in esports conversation, but her and Chiba, I look at, and Shox, three women that pay for You don't like the, 
How do you feel about being a woman oh, in a male dominant industry? Like, if I had a pound for every time I was asked that question. This is why I respect people it's like so the ones you just labeled. Yeah. Like, and there's they an, don't use that. They don't use it as a crutch. It's not a crutch. They've just done their own thing. And that's why people like me can exist because they've gone, okay, yeah, I'm a woman, but I'm actually good yeah. as well. I'm not going to use that as but, a... I, I think I was making this point before, but I got off the tangent because I'm slightly drunk. Um, but like, oh, it's about Rush. Yeah, but this is about other people as well. Like you, you fall into the same category. I like you as a human. I like the way you present yourself on a day-to-day -day basis, Thank the way that you converse with people. I think that you're an, a nice person, Thanks. right? And to be fair, you and I, I don't think have ever sat down in an environment like this, obviously never a podcast environment, but an yeah, environment yeah. where we're talking like this. Um, but I've always like, respected the way that you carry yourself. Thank you. And, but the thing that I respect overall with everybody is people who are good at their job, who like their job. You can be good at your job and you can hate your job. And if that's the type of person you are in Counter-Strike, you can get the fuck out. But yeah. you clearly like CS. And I remember I tell you, you're in the B-roll footage on this ESL event, you know? You're here, like, from 2015 or whatever, like, in the crowd. Little baby when face it was Freya. like Gamescom time. Exactly. And we're still there, like, 20... 2013, 2014? Yeah. That's fucking crazy. That makes me reflect and think how far we've come. Exactly, like, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but my, my, my point here, and I wasn't meant to be like a compliment, but you fall into this category, <laughs> is I really respect the way that you do your job. Thank you. Right? I, I, I like you on a social level, but the thing that like, essentially what I care about more than anything in the world is the future of Counter-Strike and the community that gets to live off of that. Right, like I don't want this to ever be a closed thing, like a riot gig, where only a certain amount of people get to live. I think if you're valuable and you actually care and you can show it, and not only care, but actually say, quote unquote, the right things, right? Like there's no, it's, I guess that's subjective in a way, but mm. there's people who could go and do their job and they say something and it sounds stupid, or someone go and do their job and it sounds correct. And I, like, I, like you are someone who I think does a fantastic job. Mm. Rush is someone who I think, Rush for me, the best observer in the world. Oh. I think after Rush is Chef, but Rush is like a great observer. I fucking, I, I look at like Yanko, I think he's a great, great at work. Jason, I think in terms of a color or hybrid commentator, he's fucking great. Henry, same thing. I fucking love all these people. I love them socially for the humans they are and the people I've experienced, but I also love them for what they do in their work. And they care about the game as much as me. And I know you care about the game as much as me. And when I look at human beings, we all who exist in this world, that for me separates the people. Like there are people who are extremely talented, who have come and gone. And those people are very good technically at what they do, but they don't care about the game. And that, that for me, that's where the cutoff is. Like you can care about the game a lot and not be very good, or you can not care about the game and be very good. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. the best for me is if you're very good at what you do and you care about the game. Yeah, best and of both worlds. That's the type of humans I want to hang out with. You know, it's a little bit elitist. Um, but I think with like projects like EPL, right? Like we, for the time that I was there, which this time was unfortunately shorter than I hoped, was it was a very social environment. Like yes. you invited us all around to your house, and it was like let's have the. I wanted that to be a weekly meeting. fixture. Like yeah. Oh, did it not become? Was it? I, think I guess we did it a couple times, maybe yeah, like two yeah. or three in total. But maybe we would have upset the neighbours. I'm not sure because <laughs> uh, it was like a Monday night. But <laughs> uh, yeah. But now Henry is quite literally my neighbour. I think we'll be okay. Okay, good. Yeah, yeah no noise complaints. No, I That's think we'll good. be fine. I think we'll be fine. One other tangent I was going to take with the Cologne thing was uh, obviously now I've merged with a ESL. Yes, group. yes, yes. I work with a lot more Germans, and Carnival was a big. Oh my thing. god! Oh, that's Have right. Have you been to Carnival? Oh. Oh, okay. It's only Cologne, right? So, uh, yes. Well, it, actually, there's offshoots of it. It's celebrated differently. So, for example, uh, I dated this other girl at ESL. Uh, um, no, we can skip that. Uh, uh, and, anyway. and she was from a different, she was from uh, a place south. She was from Karlsruhe or Karlsbad, I forget. Anyway, either way. Okay. She was from different more south than Cologne. And the way that they would do the carnival stuff was a little bit different. People would dress up as like witches and shit. It was weird. It was wow. much more weird. Spooky. Yeah. Halloween vibes. Yeah, that. not like the carnival you're used to in Cologne. Yeah, very bright, colorful. Yeah. yeah. But I don't know what the what the situation is with the all connector, but the Cologne one. So, Zulpischerstrasse, which is where I lived. Okay. Uh, actually, technically, where I lived was Engelbertstrasse Eins, uh, which was like 
can like hit on with Zulpisha. But anyone who's been to Cologne knows Zulpisha. Is it's, this like a cross grid of streets? Is well, like... not, re yeah, not no, really. Not really. Like no. my, my street was just attached to the main party street. Ah, uh, okay. But okay. I was so okay. close to the main party street, I may as well have been on it. Like I was on the corner directly below oh, a pub shit. and I had a view right. down the street. So I might be able to find, actually I can't find the photo right now, but um, when you would look out your window in the morning, uh, on carnival days, the street was a sea of human beings all oh, in costume. Wow. Literally from my balcony. Wow. Right? So hundreds That's and hundreds so... and hundreds of people just flooding across this street, Zulpischstraße. So um, and I remember Ifia would spend a bit of time in Cologne as well uh, with her different connections. And I remember one year she came down for, for maybe it was that 2018 year, and she came down for carnival. And I remember having her and her partner and a couple of other ESL people in my apartment for it and stuff. And then we went out and she was dressed as like a... Um, like a runaway bride. Uh, and I ordered a costume and I was, had a, it was like one that stayed inflated. It was like an inflatable T-Rex that I was riding. <laughs> I know exactly the costume yeah. you're talking yeah. about. That's amazing. So that's what I had. And going through like all the pubs and stuff wearing that, it was a little bit difficult. But um, like it's so wild that this is how crazy it is. Like I was literally in the epicenter of Carnival. Like where we were, it was the epicenter of like all the crazy bullshit that goes on. And I remember going down one morning to take my bins out and Carnival goes for a fucking week, right? Like in February, it's like mm. a week. In November, it's only like one or two days. But in February, it's like a whole week. And there's different days. Like for the example, there's a day that's like meant to be empowering to women where like men wear ties and the women come up and cut the ties and kiss them. I don't know. Really? I don't know anything about like I don't wow. understand it all. I only thought it was one day. No, it's fucking wow. crazy. Wow, okay, I didn't know that. It's a whole that. week. It's a whole week. Damn. Yeah. Um, well, my department only celebrate one day apparently but give them the whole week off yeah yeah, yeah. crazy yeah just be out there in february or whenever it is right it's fucking wild but um everybody gets drunk everyone has a good time everyone's very liberal um uh, sexually in a week like that apparently <laughs> i actually I, I, that i can't actually attest to but uh i remember i was going there to take my bins out and i was going down the stairs like maybe a floor below me there was a girl like drunk as a fucking skunk it looked like she was passed out again sitting against someone's oh, door no. And I was like, okay. And as I came back up the stairs, I went, like, are, are you, are you all right? Do you need some water or something? Like, are you okay? Like, just to check on another human being. And she didn't speak a lot of English. And we kind of conversed a little bit. And she was mega fucking wasted, obviously, from the night before. And we're talking at, like, 9 o'clock in the morning. We're outside. It's below zero. It's maybe oh, minus one. No. It's fucking... She's not wearing shoes. I'm like, what the fuck happened to your shoes, oh. love? So I bring her up to my apartment. And... Um, sit her down at the kitchen table and her phone's dead. So I'm like, okay, well, that's all right. I can charge her phone. That's not a problem. Yeah, yeah. So we charge her phone and I'm giving her some water and I'm trying to serve her up and stuff and try and work out what the fuck is going on here. Um, and I can't talk to her. She's actually from the Netherlands because Cologne is on the west coast of Germany, which is quite close to the Netherlands. So it turns out she's from there. And her friends call and I answer the phone. I try and talk to them. They don't speak any English. So I'm like, well, this is just fucking mental. I don't know what to do. Eventually, we get to the point where they're telling her to go to the train station. The train station is not close to Zulpische Strasse. Like Central in Cologne is not that close. Yeah. It's going to take you a while to get there. She didn't have any shoes. So eventually, once I got the phone charged, her, not sobered up, but she could at least fucking talk. Uh, and we were back and forthing somehow. I gave her a pair of my shoes. She was like, I don't have any shoes. I was like, well, I don't fucking know what to do. I was like, all right, whatever. So I gave her a, a pair of my shoes and I walked her down to the tram station. And I put her on a tram to Central Station so she could get a fucking train back to the Netherlands. Holy shit. And that was my first experience with Carnival when I moved. <laughs> and I was like, this is fucking crazy. Because oh I would love God. sitting on my balcony just looking at the people going wild. Great That's people fine. watching, yeah. Yeah, but then when I was dealing with this girl, and I was like, how did you get separated from your friends? Like, I, I assume what happened was she, you know, she got a little bit, you know, a little bit drunk and maybe went home with someone and yeah, had some fun out. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah which is yeah. Didn't want to stay the night i'm Fair. not i'm not judging no, anybody no judgment no judgment yeah everybody losing your shoes that's a problem yes especially when it issue. was below zero i was like there's no way you're walking barefoot and going I was, so those shoes are gone and i hope that that girl is doing all right but um yeah, good guy shoes uh, yeah no i, po I, I pose as one yeah. i'm gonna put uh, <laughs> but uh yeah like carnival is lots of fun um, I think it's a young person's game, so I might be... No, actually, that's not true. They all fucking love it. And the thing is, did, were you in Cologne for it? No, I'd never been. It was... Uh, we were having, like, a few meetings for... Oh, okay. I guess it would have been pre Katowice this year. Yeah, that would have been around then. It sounds wacky. You've got about another six months to wait, but, like, next year you should go if you can, if it doesn't, like... Because it's... I love it. It's stupid fun. Like, it's, it's like... The, the biggest issue is when you go into some of their more pubs, it's playing Cologne music, like... 
not German music, Cologne music oh. to Carnival. And they're all loving it. They're all going mental about huh. whatever's happening there and they're having a great time. And it's, it's really, it's a cool atmosphere. Um, it's, it's a lot of fun. Everybody gets in costume for those people who aren't too familiar with it at home. But yeah, you love dress that. it up, you're doing all this wild shit. I love shit. a fancy dress party. Fucking I never did. Sick. I'm into it now. I, yeah. I love dressing up for work. I love it when everyone's <laughs> like, yo, you're whack on a costume. I'm like, fuck yeah, let's fucking do it. I expect like, a cowboy hat tomorrow. Uh, what's the show match tomorrow? So yeah, yeah maybe I can bring well, out yeah, the cowboy. You're, Actually, team I'm not USA on... or Team Rest of the World? I guess Rest of the World. By I think birth. Alice is playing for Rest of the World. So, ah, you but gotta, you know me as a commentator, I'm impartial at all times. Yeah, obviously. Just the best yeah. team wins. I expect an Aussie flag. <laughs> at least a kangaroo. Yeah, <laughs> we used to travel with an inflatable kangaroo called Kev. Yeah, and we put a Vox Eminor jersey on him, traveling. We we knew we had to be I remember that shit from watching like the major All right, that was us. I didn't know his name was Kev. Yeah, Kev, Kev the kangaroo. So yeah, he was he was fun with us. He came with us all over the world. Wow. Yeah. I can't believe you didn't put him as your thing that reminds you of someone important. No, it had to be rush. In this time capsule, but had to be rush. Um, are you content with now? You know, closing, locking, putting the soil on top of this time capsule. Do you think this kind of exemplifies you I think as a so. Person. We cried, we laughed. Yeah, man. All the yeah, emotions everything. in between. Yeah. I how, appreciate you being so authentic. But how do, how do you feel? Because this is the first episode of a show that doesn't have a name yet. Yeah, it doesn't even have a name. Um, this is like way better than I thought it would go. Oh, okay. That's yeah, good. no, like legit. Considering, I, I mean, as you said, you know, we haven't, we've spoken in, in green rooms after when we're having a few, you know, apple juices and such. Sure. Um, but it's really nice to get to know you a bit more, yeah, I guess intimately as a person, mm. right? Because I think it's really important when we're traveling this much and when you work with a group of people so much, it's nice to get to know them on a real human level and know what's important to them and what kind of built them as a person mm. and what's happened in your life, right? Because for me, I look at you and I think about your career path and this really made me reflect upon, you know, the personal struggles you've had to go through, but also like, how impactful coming from a region which is so far away from where you know the center of counter-strike is like mm. how much sacrifice it has to take and how much of a personal toll that can take on you like that is really important i don't think we really discussed that i've been judged a lot online recently because i've been a little bit more open about like stuff that is to do with me or what i would listen to on every day like the alpha brain pills or the type of podcast <laughs> i listen to and um, people have put me in this box like i'm a weird person for having these things that I do which I think is like really strange because the people who comment on this stuff put nothing about themselves out online right yeah. uh, they, they, there's no vulnerability from them about what they do every day and they might believe in the fucking man in the sky which no offense to you if you believe in the man in the sky but no. like if these people are judging me about taking a fucking pill um, <laughs> that I call a placebo and they believe about fucking Jesus Christ like I well it's God but I like like what <laughs> are we talking about here like but um for me, in a lot of conversations and, and the way that I feel like I have conducted myself the majority of my career, uh, contrary to what some people might say about me, um, I feel that I'm always trying to just be me. Like, I, I, I don't have anything to hide from people. Like, I'm sure I have skeletons in my closet like everybody else, and I know in certain points in my life I've been a dick, and I know I've maybe, like, been a little bit too aggressive to someone or maybe spoken shit about someone. Like, everybody has those type of things about them, but... Um, one of the things that I think I can be proud of is the fact that most of the time, well, not most of the time, all the time, I'm trying to be authentic to me. Um, and talking about this with all of the stuff that I listen to and what I like, what I like listening to, um, is people just being themselves. And obviously I'm taking what they say as themselves, but I try to be that when I do stuff like this. That's why yeah. I like doing talking counter because I get to, sh to be a bit more me. And that's something with this, it's like, uh, I'm sure there's gonna be like, uh, people are like, wow, that podcast was shit. Sponge just spoke about himself the entire time. That's the whole fucking point. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> uh, but, but um, getting to just kind of talk like this is not something that, uh, I'm never normally the guest on a podcast. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm normally either the, the host or the guy who's tasked with ranting or something like that right so and not necessarily about yourself about cs yeah so getting to talk about some of this stuff especially like the bit we spoke about at the start with my grandma um only probably in the last year or less have i like tackled that oh, wow. properly so i'm still struggling but I'm, I'm not struggling 
I don't sit there and like, you know, cry myself to sleep or anything mm -hmm. like that, but it's something that like I swept aside because I didn't need to, like thinking about it, or spending time on it wasn't necessary for what I needed to do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I have no issues. Like that's why I talk about the hair transplant thing. Like I would prefer to give people the information and for people to look at me and go, this 33 year old man should be bold. Right? And I would like people to know that information. I'd much prefer they know that than think that I still look like an 18-year-old version yeah, of myself yeah, with a full yeah. head of hair because it's disingenuous. A lot of celebrities out there are doing this shit and they don't talk about it because, well, it's not that they don't have to. It's that it's not necessary for them. It's not necessary for me. Yeah. Um, but I think there's a big difference between esports and our audience and people who do fucking movies and TV. Like, we're more closely plugged in with our audience than ever Way before. Way more accessible to But everybody. it's also something I learned when I was a kid as well. Like, I wasn't the most popular kid in school. I was a little bit chubby. I played video games, right? So, like, it was an, it was an easy target to be bullied. And I also, uh, after I had, like, a breakup with my friend group, opted to ostracize myself from other people. And you learn very quickly that, like, once you own anything that is, like, true about you, even if it's seen negatively by other people, that you take all the power away from those people. Like... Alex, for example, he was talking about this with a show that we did the other night that we're not going to release for a couple of weeks, but like, because he's dark skinned, we don't know where Alex is from. I'll be honest, we don't know. Alex, Alex doesn't even know where he's from. Yeah, he's yeah, British. Yeah. That's Alex. But we don't know why he's got a darker complexion than most other people, right? Like, his mum did some tests, whatever. But he used to get teased in school and called horrible names by people. Because we're talking, you know, 20 years ago now when he was in school. Yeah. Um, but like, when he was able to own that, which is still a negative stigma, but he, he said it, he turned it into like a positive for him in the way that he would talk to people, right? And it's the same, like, this is all, everybody goes through shit and I don't expect anybody to understand my shit and I'm never gonna understand anybody else's shit. But the thing that I can do is I can be honest about my stuff and yeah. I don't care what, no, that's not true, I do care. What I do care about is the people on the internet who don't like me doing my job for whatever reason. That's, that, that's true. That is the truest thing I've fucking said in a long time. When I read a comment that's negative, like, I don't like Sponge's casting, this is bad about him. And I go, where did you get that judgment? And why do you have that of me? Because the only thing I want in the world is to do a job that can make people enjoy what I'm doing. Like, I just want to bring a spotlight to the players in the server and what they do. That's all I want to do. And I want to put shine on them. I'm never out here for me. Yes. Like as much as people think whatever about me, that's fine. I'm not out here for me. I'm out here because I enjoy what I'm doing every day. I care deeply about Counter-Strike. I'm, I'm not here, I'm not here to, to make money. I'm here to get to do the thing that I've loved for the majority of my life every day. And that's the only reason like I'm here. And to read when people don't like what I do, I wonder what I did in a broadcast or a moment that made them not like me. The last thing I want to do is have people not like what I do. That's mm -hmm. the opposite of what I'm trying to do. Yeah. And it's like, that's the bit that gets to me the most is because, and me and Alex are the same. Like if we see a negative comment about us or our duo or anything like that, like we'll let that get to us more than we'll let a comment from a sincere human being at this event who comes up to us. Dude, I, I had this guy, um, I had this guy and he was emphatic. He was emphatic about letting me know just how much he loved what I do and the podcast and everything. And he just stood there and he just kept reeling out, reeling out, reeling out. And I was like, hey man, like I really appreciate that. Like, thank you. Like, I don't know how to respond to it. Like compliments, most it's people don't. It's fucking hard. It's, right? right? And, and he was, he, would, he just kept doing it and kept, and like, and I was like, man, like, this is another person taking their time out of their day, first of all, to come to HLTV Confirmed, which I love, like Prof and Striker and all those guys. That was amazing, Paris. By yeah, the way, yeah, like, you joined us, right? Yeah, what, accidentally, yeah. but like an honor for real. Well, thank you for joining us. Oh, it, it, it beyond a pleasure. It's like, so really. crazy to think so many people come to watch a podcast. That's amazing. And then to have one of the people who were there at the podcast take me aside as I'm saying hi to everybody and and say that time and time, I then like I go and I just there was like a, I called it Counter Strike Philosophy Park. It was that park across from the hotel in Paris. And I would go sit there with some guys and I'd talk to Simple and other players and everything. And it was it's cool, it's fun. But I remember I was sitting out there on my own and I was just like reflecting on what this guy said to me. I just recorded like a voice message because he sent me a message on Instagram. And I just recorded, and just said, hey man, like I really appreciate this. I care about the longevity of this game and the people who get to experience their life through this game competing to become the absolute best. And the things that I've got to experience 
because of this journey is things that I never thought I would have ever had. Going to the Valve office is, is maybe, no, not maybe, like I can't even, th it's gonna be a top three experience in my entire life. Like that Vox Eminor thing we talked about is probably in that top three conversation as well. And then I'd have to think really hard to think of the other thing. But getting to go to the place of the people who make the fucking game that my entire life is based off. Yeah. It's like going to a different planet. It's surreal, right? It's yeah. crazy. So as long as I'm involved in Counter-Strike in 10 years time. Counter-Strike is a unique beast. That we 100%. Have, and I want to nurture that. 100%. And to grow. And I don't know, maybe in 10 years time we'll be on CS3, CS4. Who hey, fucking knows? We're going to get knows? to CS2 first. Exactly. So. Um, cheers to that with our empty beer well, mine's, cans. I'm a slow drinker, but yeah. cheers. Well, yeah, cheers and thank cheers. you. An honor to have you on the podcast. Yeah, thank, thank you, you so for much. having me.